right? <laughs> Everyone could settle in. We're, we're going to begin our regular meeting. People in here, people are in here at home. Here. We should make everyone just scoot forward. Yeah, if if everybody here would be so kind to physically scoot forward, um, it's technological wizardry, but you'll be able to hear better. Um, and also, if if, if anybody um, would like any hearing devices, if you're hard of hearing, we do have those available too. But for now, if you'd be so kind to just scoot forward, it should be acoustic. And everyone can speak up. Thank you. Don't shout. Please. <laughs> All right. Let's call this a regular meeting of April 9th. Uh, Board of Sires Township Board of Trustees to order. Um, we'll begin with the roll call and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Pathway? Yes. Um, present. Palmer? Present. Lintoff? Present. Crizo? Yes, present. Carey? Absent? No. Present. Riser? Present. We have quorum. Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, into the soul, the freedom of the world. Thank you. For those uh, joining us, we um, at this point, we are running a little behind this evening because our uh, we had a special meeting preceding this regular meeting and it ran over a little bit. So um, please bear with us. Uh, first item is the adoption of the agenda. There was a request to uh, shift um, the report uh, under H2 of the uh, Transit Advisory Committee and the related action item, which is uh, J8 under new business so that they are uh, together. Uh, so the the, uh, the suggestion is to move H2 uh, to the top of new business and then J8 to move that up so that it follows immediately after H2. Are there any other, uh, oh, and then one other comment, there's uh, under reports, uh, there's a separate item for the code enforcement report that's, it should have just been um, uh, put in under uh, the uh, regular reports as a written report. Um, so there won't be any kind of presentation for that. I, um, are there any other changes to the agenda? Anything related to the special meeting? The, what you mentioned earlier about fire item? Oh, yeah, item, uh, item will be, We'll discuss it under reports, just okay. in general. Yeah, jo Joyce will address okay. that under uh, reports. The township manager. Um, are there any other suggested modifications? In that case, uh, someone prepared to move the adoption of the agenda. I would move its adoption. I'll support. So moved by risers, support by Noel. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Communications to the board of trustees. Uh, yeah, one communication. I would just note that this matter is being... Um, worked on by our fire chief and code enforcement officer. Okay. Um, in that case, that brings us to public comment. Uh, this is time for members of the public to speak for up to three minutes on any matter under the purview of the board of trustees. We hear first from those who are present um, and then we turn to those who are participating remotely. Um, each speaker has up to three minutes and trustee Brazil, will you serve as our trustee? Thank you. Thank you. Please approach um, the table if you have a public comment. I'm still David Reed and I'm still in Sio Township. I just have a comment. I understand I read in the agenda that there's a possible resolution for discussion about perhaps letting folks put beehives on I think it's part of the West Sile Preserve, one of the parcels of the West Sile Preserve. Now, I'm a great supporter of bees. We need bees, it's critical. I have two hives on my property. There are four hives on one of my neighbor's properties. We have bees in the neighborhood, very critical. I have great concern about using, uh, about allowing this use on the public property. Um, we have, to my knowledge, we have no policy or procedure on what we can and can't do on the preserves that we buy, other than I think there's some general statement about 
uh, passive uh, passive activities, um, hiking, photography, nature, nature study, that type of thing. But there's no, you can do this and you can't do that type of thing. So I think before we go down this road, which, you know, it might be a good idea to allow bees there because it is a, I think that could be considered a passive activity. And I think it's also good for the environment, good for the residents. But before we do that, I think we need to have a clear defined policy for what we can do on the preserves. And this may be part of it and that might be fine. But um, if we do this without a policy, next week somebody's gonna wanna have a, a pig farm on the preserve that's across the street from them or, or have cows on the property across the street from them. So I think it's really important that we have a policy before we do this. I, I'm not necessarily against it, although I think, I think the resolution calls for moving the hives in the middle of winter, which I think would be a terrible idea because I think that would disturb the bees and possibly kill them. But I don't know that I'm not an expert, um, but I do know, I think that would be a mistake. But before we do this, we should be real careful. Thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah, Good evening, Kathleen Grant. Um, I just have something real quick. That's why I'm not even sitting down. Um, in the payment of the bills, there's an item for our, um, was our network provider, I think it's called NetSmart, something like that. Uh, so why why are we still having those bills? I thought that was going to be eliminated by having our own IT director. So if you could answer that, I'd appreciate it. Is there anyone else present who would like to speak during public comment? I'm going to speak under the microphone. I hope that's going to make a difference. Oh, it is. Okay. Good evening, Pat Stein, Sio Township, longtime resident. <clears throat> the events known as Sheriff Gate that began six months ago and is still being discussed tonight at a special meeting reminds me of the children's story, The Emperor, who wore no clothes. In my version of the story, the emperor, of course, would be Supervisor Hathaway. Not an emperor in the sense that he's a leader always looking out for the well-being of his subject. His subjects in this fractured fairy tale, Emperor Hathaway is being manipulated and groomed by his handlers, not the weavers. You pretty much everyone knows who I'm referring to. So these handlers appeal to Hathaway's ego, making him believe that he can do no wrong because they will protect him and if he follows their explicit instructions, Sia will be their dream township, the most developed township of all the land. The reference to the emperor not wearing any clothes is not suggesting that Emperor Hathaway appears in public lacking any clothing. No, it's reference to Supervisor Hathaway's lack of accountability. Since November, members of this board have spent hours strategizing, spending taxpayers' dollars and staff's valuable time paying for an investigation by a reputable company, a reputable company who was given too little too late to provide a concrete explanation as to the series of events that took place those many months ago. We all know what happened. Mr. Hathaway's history shows us what clearly took place. You know that I'm not one to mince words, so let me spell it out for you. Supervisor Hathaway made a mistake, a simple mistake, by failing to log out of his email account when he last used the public computer. A simple mistake that could have been dismissed with a simple apology to those who were using the public computer to set up a meeting on Zoom. But no, Supervisor Hathaway does not make mistakes. He does not apologize for his mistakes either. Instead, he blames others. But in this case, he didn't place the blame on the two people accessing the public computer. Ian and Jillian. Nope, he put the blame on only one of the two people, the woman, and not just any woman, trusty Jillian Carey, his adversary. And he just didn't just blame her. Nope, again, he ran to the sheriff's office accusing Ms. Carey of hacking his email. And a sheriff deputy hearing this accusation directly from the supervisor of Sio Township, the township that has a signed contract with the sheriff's department, took immediate steps to address this claim. The false claim led to a sheriff knocking on the door of Miss Carey's home after dark on a Sunday night 
to question her about hacking the supervisor emails. We all know this absolution, or excuse me, this accusation is totally bogus. This convoluted process was put in place for the sole purpose of Supervisor Hathaway not wanting to admit he made a mistake by failing to log out of his email account when he last used the public computer. All you had to do was apologize. So I ask you, members of the board, you hold super, will you hold Supervisor Hathaway accountable for the resulting cost to the taxpayers? Will he be held accountable for turning his mistake into a political opportunity and smearing his advisory? You, Will he be held accountable by the authorities for filing a false police report? And finally, will you be reimbursing Jillian Carey for her attorney's fees because of a false accusation from your mom? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during public comment? Please come up. Yeah, Paula Gloverson resident since uh, 1986, I believe. Um, I've done a lot of things with the township. Unfortunately, now with this particular supervisor, I've had, many of us have to watch every meeting now that they're on SIO Community News. Now there's other more dysfunctional. Ottawa County, they were, the taxpayers were paying for uh, somebody to come in and check the, uh, managers uh, see if there's any bugging devices. So we're not the most dysfunctional, but this has been extremely dysfunctional. And I wanna say something to you, John. My grandmother used to say this. She was a wealth of information and pearls of wisdom. When you lie down with dogs, you're gonna get up with fleas. And, and you know what? A lot of people have done a lot of good things in here. You have been more divisive Will Hathaway in this community than anyone else that I have ever seen in all the years that I've participated. Charles Gellman had more integrity than you when I dealt with him for years and years. And I hope everyone gets on neighborhood uh, or get the information out why we cannot have this individual ever again as trustee, supervisor, or even on a committee. He has no ethical bones in his body. Thank you, Paula. Uh, who's next? If there's no one else present who wishes to speak during public comment, let's turn to those who are participating remotely. Well, sure. Um, first up, please uh, raise your Zoom hand. First up is Pam Boyd, followed by Jonathan Pam. Pam Boyd, you're up. Okay, there I'm unmuted. Um, Pam Boyd, SIO Community Newsletter, SIO Community News YouTube channel for anyone who wants to go and listen to these meetings that have been recorded. Um, the six o'clock meeting, Supervisor Hathaway, um, Rob was right, you really should resign. This this meeting at six o'clock was a pinnacle of your inability to work with your board. You make decisions when they should come before the board uh, the board body first. You are so disrespectful to your fellow female board members. I, I'm I'm appalled. So many issues. You have spent so much township monies like it's your own right um, as an individual to do so. You have stepped out of line too many times. You do need to resign. Oh, and where is that list of priorities for this last couple of months um, to accomplish for this board? Still not a priority, I suppose. And Treasurer Palmer, please. Um, I expect you to call out the supervisor when he attacks the fellow women on this board. Um, you have been here for 30 years. Um, you know better, You, but it, it has been proven um, by how you voted that you will kiss his feet. Stop it, stop bowing down to him. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Uh, next up is Rob Pattinson followed by Jonathan Greenberg. Rob. Thank you, Rob Pattinson, Sio Township resident. 
In tonight's OHM report, Abrez Grove is um, waiting for an easement pending from the uh, from the uh, condo association. So our uh, so our Park Ridge neighbors need to know that that Abrez that ridiculous Abrez Grove project is still trying to push forward. Um, our code enforcement officer in this report um, finally let us know a smidge of information. We now know that there were um, 56 reports to GFL in the month, month of March. There were six reports to both, uh, there were six reports to Sio Township alone, and there were four reports to both uh, Sio Township and GFL. If you extrapolate that ratio to, and, and there, so far we've gotten no information from GFL about how many reports have been made to them over the past couple of years. They've refused to provide that information. And now I think I know why. If you extrapolate that ratio to the, the GFL reports to Sio Township, that's 432 last year, uh, up until last October. And you multiply that by uh, that ratio, that's 2,333 reports that were made to GFL under that ratio. So clearly GFL has had thousands, literally thousands of reports, and they're refusing to provide that information because it makes them look bad. Um, our utilities report, thank you to utilities director, uh, uh, our utilities director. Uh, that is an outstanding report tonight. It's eight pages of text, 13 pictures that help describe that. I wish our supervisor and our treasurer could take a lesson from that and actually provide um, written reports, number one, but also uh, complete reports in the same manner. Um, in tonight's uh, agenda packet, the 7970 uh, property, the uh, contact information for whoever is bidding on the property has been redacted. Could you tell us why? And then I'll repeat again, uh, Supervisor Hathaway knew for months that the investigation was over and didn't tell anyone and this board should demand an explanation. And when I say demand an explanation, I'm speaking to you, Trustee Riser. I'm speaking to you, Trustee Brizzo. I'm speaking to you, Trustee Knoll. And I'm speaking to you, Clerk Flintoft. Each of you individually and collectively should demand an explanation for why this supervisor is acting independent of this board. A general law township, the supervisor is part of a group, not an independent uh, mayor, you need to hold this supervisor responsible and demand an explanation. And I again, I uh, say you should resign and you should resign in shame and you should resign tonight. Thanks, Thank Rob. Jonathan, you're up next. Thank you, Rob. Jonathan, you're unmuted. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, uh, read the packet. Really uh, some good stuff. Um, 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 interested in, in commenting on uh, David Reed's earlier comments about the beekeeping. I think that's a great step forward. I think we do need to move with precision and make sure that we uh, take into account the various issues. I think one solution would be that uh, nobody could you could raise anything on any public lands if it's bigger than a walnut, because then the whole pig and cow thing right out there. Um, also, I'd like to uh, answer a, a couple of questions that were asked earlier. The answer is no, 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 and no. Will isn't going to do anything. The board isn't going to hold him accountable. He's not going to pay back the taxpayers for the tens of thousands or thousands of dollars or teens of thousands of dollars spent on this worthless investigation. Uh, that that will weaponized in order to attack a fellow uh, bo. Fellow trustee, uh, we're not going to see uh, Donna ever behave with any uh, ethics towards her fellow uh, female township folks, um, and more importantly, we're not going to ever get to the bottom of Sheriff Gate because what will and will do is continue to uh, you know wishy washy back and forth, and without a 
deep investigation into his timing and how he went about this uh, without the sheriff cooperating, without anyone being interested in holding him accountable, nothing will happen just like it has in the past. It's unfortunate, but we do have a chance this August to change things. And so I urge anyone listening to this message, anyone listening to this meeting, to vote for residents who are for residents, not residents who are for developers and other big businesses within the township. Please, folks, we got to get the right people in office next time. We can do that in August, not November. It's August. We've got to get rid of these idiots now in August. Stay tuned. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, and uh, who's next? Um, I see no other Zoom hands. All right. Let's move on to approval of minutes. Well, I just had one response oh, right. to the sorry, question. You, you did want to respond. Um, to Kathleen's question about the invoice, um, I've talked with um, Chris Bailey about it, and I would defer to him to give maybe a more formal response. But the short story is the transition has taken much longer than I expected, not being an expert in this. But when Chris has explained it to me, it's all these contingencies about getting the network up to date, which is almost done, the servers, and then one by one, we'll be um, removing those services. But there is a plan to do that. It's just taking a little longer than I expected. Any further comments in response to public comments? Um, let's move on then to approval of minutes. First is the special meeting of March 19th. Are there any uh, corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, is someone prepared to move the draft minutes uh, for approval? I'll move. It's, uh, moved by Noel. Support. Support by Riser. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The special meeting minutes of March 19th are approved. The next set of minutes are from the regular meeting of March 19th. Are there any corrections to those minutes? I have one. Um, page six of the minutes um, under supervisor report, I would just like to, re um, to replace the word request um, with proposal. I think that's a more accurate description of what we're putting on the ballot. Got it. Yeah. Any other corrections? If not, is someone, is someone prepared to move the minutes? As amended. As amended. Also moved. Moved by Brazo, support by Noel. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Those minutes are approved. That brings us to the consent agenda. Is someone prepared to move the consent agenda? Is that a yes? I would move. <laughs> move by Riser. Support. Support by Flintoff. Uh, please call the roll. Um, starting tonight with Noel. Noel? Yes. Riser? Yes. Pathway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Flintoff? Yes. Brazo? Yes. Consent agenda adopted six to zero. Thank you. Um, that brings us to the reports. And uh, first is the presentation by the Daughters of American Re Revolution on the Popkins burial grounds on Pratt Road. Great. So we have a few guests here for a brief um, report and questions. Um, please come forward. I want to thank you for being here. Um, briefly, as a reminder, the board approved an agreement with the Daughters and Sons of the American Revolution um, to um, help clean up Popkins Cemetery on Pratt Road. We've enlisted the help of Guardian Tree Company. I'm happy to say that they're pro bono, going to um, trim some trees for us. And I want to um, turn it over to the volunteers to share a little bit about the cemetery. Thank you for being here. If you could start with introductions. I'm Elizabeth Keller. I'm the region of the Ypsilanti chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. My name is Lauren Smith. I'm the regent of the Sarah Caswell Angel chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution out of Ann Arbor. I'm Phil Jackson with the Sons of the American Revolution, and I'm not a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, a little bit of background <laughs> is that the Michigan Society Daughters of the American Revolution 
uh, is putting together a document of all known American Revolutionary War patriots buried in the state of Michigan. And two years ago, it was requested that the local chapters gather this information and share it with the state organization. The patriots being identified have a member in the DAR who has proven their lineage to an American Revolutionary patriot. Moving forward, uh, the DAR, along with the Sons of the American Revolution, the American 250 organization, and other patriotic organizations are overseeing and planning and preparing for the 250th anniversary of the United States on July 4th, 2026. It's our goal to have all Patriot graves marked throughout the period and beyond while the 250th anniversary of the United States is recognized. In Washtenaw County, the Huron Valley chapter, Sons of the American Revolution, the Sarah Caswell Angel chapter, the Ypsilanti chapter are working together to mark the graves of these Patriots. There are 17 of the associated Patriot graves that have been located in Washtenaw County. One of those graves is in Popkin Cemetery. Popkin Cemetery is one of the earliest cemeteries in Sio Township with its first burial in 1832 of a Revolutionary War veteran, Sylvester Richmond. Sylvester Richmond, who was born in New York, served as a scout in the American Revolutionary Ar Army. Uh, there are 13 people that are buried in this cemetery. Um, the Popkins family, John and his wife, Margaret Popkins, had left everything familiar to them and set off towards the unknown in search of a better life. They traveled on a sailing ship for 21 days to Albany, New York, and where the Erie Canal had just been completed. They came down the canal on a ship bound for Detroit, and James Popkin purchased the 160 acres in Section 14 of Sio Township on February 27, 22, 1826. The family likely purchased a horse and wagon to get them and their belongings to their new property. James was not a farmer, but learned how to farm and became successful. Sylvester Richmond and his three sons arrived in the area in November 1827 and had not purchased land yet. It was typical for those who did not own land to work for those that did until they saved up enough money to purchase their own. Sylvester Richmond died six years after arriving, and James Popkin allowed him to be buried in his family burial plot. It can be assumed there was a friendly connection there. And so that's a little bit of the background of why this is so important to preserve and rehabilitate this particular cemetery. Its historic significance is uh, great for your township and for us as daughters of the American Revolution and sons of the American Revolution to honor those American Revolutionary War patriots. Uh, Phil is going to talk a little bit about what we're planning to do at the cemetery. I guess I've been a little bit more of the hands-on uh, out there digging around and uh, poking and uh, probing and uh, just kind of getting my head around everything out there. So we have been in touch with a gentleman, uh, Paul Schwimmer, who is with the Defense uh, POW MIA Accounting Agency, and he volunteers his time uh, to go around the world and search out remains for uh, POWs and MIAs. Uh, he's going to help us locate uh, graves, and uh, also been in touch with Justin Frost with Past Preservation LLC, who is gonna help us with restoring the headstones, uh, which my count is there's about seven of them out there. The rest are missing and most all of them are broken and it's, it's quite, a, quite a mess. 
Um, we do have an Eagle Scout who's doing the Eagle Scout project out there who will be extending the path around there. He's um, going to build a structure, an entrance feature, an uh, arch, or we don't really uh, have a design of it yet. We have a new sign to go with it. And he's also going to supervise the cleanup, uh, which is May 4th um, from 10 to 2, uh, which kind of gets me to another problem that we have and it's okay if I come up and pass out some pictures. Yeah, sure. um, but you'll notice from these these uh, pictures there's quite a lot of wood on that piece of property. And uh, our objective on May short is to haul out what we can um, probably pile it by the by the road. Um, <laughs> maybe a fire would be the best way of getting rid of it but we don't have access to water, and uh, it's thank you so very much. Um, we'd really appreciate help from the township from getting rid of uh, all this wood that we're going to generate. So I don't know if that's possible, but um, we're asking. And um, we do want to thank you for approving us to be able to do this, and also to. Um, get word out in the newsletter. We're getting a lot of response from uh, neighbors and uh, people that want to help on May 4th, so. Thank you. And and to be clear, um, Guardian Tree Company has committed to doing um, some of the tree work and hauling it away pro bono. So um, hopefully that will, the plan is that that will be done before the May 4th cleanup, the big stuff at least, so. so on the cleanup on May 4th, we're going to be generating a lot of yeah. brush, so we're going to have to come up with some plan, plan to get that. rid of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and I encourage everybody to come out if you can. Um, any other questions about it? Well, did Laura, did you have something to add? Um, thank you. I just wanted to mention that we have set up a Facebook page to connect to people in the area about what we're doing, why we're doing it and what good it is for the community and for us going into the 250th anniversary of our country. Also, an email has been established for communication. I understand six neighbors so far have come forward and expressed an interest in helping out. And the Boy Scout who's working on his Eagle project has put in a good amount of time and is trying to quantify his portion of our larger vision and he's got supervision and management plans of that fundraising and so forth he's responsible for. And then our scope is beyond that. You know, he will work on the path, the trail, the sign. Ours is the whole area, maybe a fence, maybe a wall, you know, whatever, a lot to be determined. Um, but we're looking to um, spruce up the area and maybe leave the, uh, uh, area where the um, grave sites are in, in better shape and a place that could be revered. Thank you for your time. If people were trying to find that Facebook page, they just look for Popkins or? Friends of, yeah. Friends Friends of, of Popkins, Popkins Cemetery. Cemetery. Friends, of, Friends of Popkins Cemetery. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And the email address is preservation250 at iCloud.com. Are there any other questions that you have for us? Yes. I have one. I, I see where it says it's <clears throat> located near Honey Creek. Yes. And I'm trying to visualize where that crosses Pratt Road. Does it cross Pratt Road or are they just? It's yeah. where Honey Creek dead ends into Pratt Road. Honey, Honey Creek does Honey cross Street, Pratt Road. Honey Creek, Honey Creek, Honey Creek Honey 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 Drive. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Honey Creek does go underneath uh, Pratt Road, but further, okay. further west. Okay. I know the area, but I don't think it's Okay, thanks. Any other questions? So thanks again for your support and for having us here. So well, you. thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. Mm -hmm. So we're we're moving to H3. This is the utility director's report. 
Yes. Are you telling director? Yes, thank you. Yeah, he's right here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I think uh, he was going to uh, try to answer any questions that board might have related to the Yes. Yep. Well, are there questions related to the report? Some really icky looking pictures, I have to say. If you get them in color, yeah, they're quite, <laughs> quite interesting to look at. Yeah. I just generally had a question, Brandon. It looks like you've done, um, you and Kevin have done some good work to kind of shift away from some of the contracted services for the building maintenance regarding, you know, HVAC or mowing, plowing, different things. Can you talk a little bit about how that's going and if you think that's going to be sustainable to continue to handle that stuff in house? Um, yes, I think we can continue to hire people that are capable of doing that work uh, now, especially with Kevin and going forward. Um, Thanks for shutting that door, Chris. Um, we definitely have staff capable and the vehicles capable of, of plowing and maintaining our own buildings um, when need be. As far as the mowing goes, um, tonight's on the agenda is for us to get a mower and a utility trailer so that we can do that as well. That will save some money. Um, and then, also, taking some of the HVAC uh, maintenance plan away was, um, I think, a good idea as well. We were getting ready to pay $8,000. Um, and when me and Kevin and Joyce looked at it, particularly me and Kevin, um, we realized that really all they were doing was coming here and changing out the filters. Uh, none of the other work was including as far as inspecting it. If we wanted to inspect it, we were paying an hourly rate for them to come. So, you know, Kevin was capable of changing out the filters. He knew exactly where to call to get the right sizes and got them ordered in. And he installed the last round of filters that needed to be updated. Um, and I think that was a, a good a good move on our end because it did save $8,000. And it was projected. It was a, we had three more years on the contract and each year it was going up by a couple hundred dollars. So um, that was definitely a, a good move, I believe. Further questions? Well, thank you. Still, yeah, thanks, Paul. All right, that brings us to our regular reports. Um, so we have uh, the, the thing, some of the things that I've been working on are actually on the agenda later on, so I won't. Um, Go into great detail about that. Um, I would like to turn to the treasurer though and see if she has anything to report. Well, the last of the bank statements came in today. So the quarterly report that I'm required to give will be at the last meeting of this month for the final quarter of last fiscal year. And that's at the end of this month. Thank you. Um, clerk. Um, yeah, no big report. I just say I went to an excellent election security training. It was the first of its kind in Michigan, collaboration with, um, you know, everybody from DEA, FBI, Homeland Security, and all the clerks throughout the entire state. So I was um, encouraged to see um, how proactive um, the state is being um, for the um, evolving threats that are evolving, but um, it, it allowed me to get a lot of good information. I went along with two colleague um, partners over at the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office, as well as our Washtenaw County clerk. So we were well represented and came back with a lot of ideas and a lot of work to get ready. Great. And is there anything of note from the Lock Alpine Sanitary Authority? Um, yeah, just to note, a um, longtime chair and former SIO resident, Dave Navarre, stepped down as um, chair and from um, the La Alpine Improvement Association representative. Um, so we have a new representative and the new chair is uh, Supervisor John Kingsley. We've done some good work um, with the accounts manager at LASA, um, the Woodhill Group, consolidating the accounts and getting a better interest rate, um, which is particularly important. We're looking at necessarily needing to raise rates potentially in the future. So <clears throat> things are going well there. 
Great. Parks, Paths, and Preserves Committee. Trust, trust We're going to be meeting um, this week as is LPC, and I will report back at, at our next meeting with the results of those meetings. More information. Great. And Planning Commission meeting met last night, and they approved a conditional use permit to allow retail operations for a flower. Um, Universe, I want to say University Flowers. There's a flower store in a new events campus, Nichols Arcade, and they have they're going to have operations out here, but uh, the planning commission voted to recommend it's not it's this board's call that they allowed to have a conditional use permit. The other thing was uh, something that we're thankful to uh, uh, attorney Mariah Fink for is the upgrading, upgrading, updating, maybe both, mm -hmm. but there are uh, the, the bylaws for the planning commission to get it mm -hmm. to come back. So I wasn't, I was in Ohio, but I listened to the meeting and I'm reporting back. Uh, what I listened to over the airways. Thank you. <clears throat> the Land Preservation Commission. We, I, I said, oh, 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 you yeah. said that too. Yeah, All right, sorry. Again. All right, sorry. I can say it a third time. We're going to be, <laughs> I'll let you know. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, I just didn't catch that one. All right, Gelman. Yes. So the public comment period for placement of the Gelman site on the national priorities list, the NPL. Um, it, it has to be listed first in the federal register. The public comment period will close on May 6th. There is a link to the appropriate site at the EPA for placing public comments on the Gelman page on the SIO website. If anybody wants to go to it, please consider posting a comment. If you have dioxane contamination in your drinking water well, if you live near what is thought to be the perimeter of the plume, um, and even if you are on municipal water, but have concerns about the city of Ann Arbor water supply, please consider making a comment on this issue. Uh, Sio Township will be filing comments. We are looking at our options right now and planning with our attorney, Bill Stapleton and Keith Gadway. We'll be meeting soon to discuss it in more detail. And also in your packet, I included the December 2020 resolution from the SIO board rejecting the fourth amended consent judgment and renewing our affirmation of the petition for the Gelman site to be designated as a Superfund site. I just put it in the packet for historical purposes so people could understand where we had been in the past. We have three new trustees on the board who were not on the board at that time when this all evolved. Also, I included a recent email from Dan Bicknell, who has done some consulting for the township on Gelman issues. And it gives a general overview of the public comment process for the EPA. So those are in your packet. I'd also, I'd also like to point out that you wrote a very thorough uh, article for people to understand this process and the issues behind it and, and the need for people to uh, um, comment before May 6th. It, that's in, in our uh, current newsletter from yes. the Township. So if you um, have that in your pile of mail at home, pull it out, read that article for sure. So one, one clarification and a question. Um, just to clarify, Dan Bicknell is not a consultant for the township. He said he has been consulting for the township. He, he has informally consulted. Informally consulted. Yeah. And to clarify, the technical expert we are under con contract with is Keith Gadway. Keith Gadway, yes. And so what is the process then? I assume that for the township's official public comment, what is the next step? Is this something we'll get an update on at the next meeting? Yes. 
Okay. You will. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, we're going to meet. Will and I are going to talk with Bill Stapleton and Keith, go through our points that we think are important to include, okay. and get Keith's feedback on that specifically. He's been involved in this before. And just to clarify, that would be the next regular meeting yes, on right. the 23rd, because we do have a special right. meeting next Tuesday. Sure. That is not like this. No, one. we won't be ready then. Correct. Do you need, uh, is there going to be a resolution that we uh, will be passing in support of having uh, the attorney and our consultant prepare something for preparation to the EPA? Because I believe so, yes. I'll be ready to support that tonight, or when you bring it back on the 23rd, whatever. And I just want to, by that point, it'll probably be the draft comment or something close to it. Yes. That is our last meeting before the deadline. Yeah. Correct. So it'll have to be ready to go, basically. I'm not anticipating that, yeah. that major changes to suggest. Right. Hopefully you won't have very many at all. Great. Well, in some ways, the, the, I think the statement from the board from December 2020 is um, serves as kind of a basis that we haven't diverged from that statement as a board. So um, if uh, this is a good thing to look at, if you have objections to anything here um, in terms of the basis for commenting to the EPA, it would be good to raise those. Yeah, with Kathy. The with focus, Kathy, yes, with Kathy the focus of that out. prior resolution was more on um, the fourth amended CJ and not so much on all of the reasons for the EPA to get involved. So there's a, a bit of difference. Yeah, but, it was um, it was serving a different purpose. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I think that does Joe have a report and I do see if he does. Well, let's see, we have township lobbying efforts. Those two we have road, we have road <laughs> advisory committee, we have the transit and bus advisory committee, but we have a separate report from them. But we do have a report from the manager, I hope. Um, I, I don't have a report tonight, but I uh, would like to request for the uh, April 16th um, board meeting. It's a special meeting related to um, the capital improvement plan that's being considered if we could add an item to the agenda related to the fire department uh, because it is time sensitive. So I think that would take a motion. I'd be supportive, but if we could, I'd be happy to offer that motion to amend the purpose of the special meeting previously called for April 16th at 7 p.m. to add, and what is the specific item? Uh, it's in, in reference to um, uh, labor issues for the fire department. Okay. A labor issue for the fire department. So you're making that motion? Yep. I will second that motion. Um, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Thank and, you. And that was? That was my report. That's your report. Okay. okay. Um, I believe we have an additional report uh, from Trustee Riser. It's just a report, um, and it's a late add-on, and it was added on after I had the opportunity to meet with Township Parker and Township Attorney Fink about a an idea for a resolution that I have. It came to light during a discussion after a planning commission meeting with a fellow planning commission uh, member who happened to be uh, a beekeeper, and he was noting that while looking into the rezoning of a partial in an industrial area, he noted that there was a 30 plus acre vacant parcel in an industrial area and thought that might be someplace that would be appropriate for beehives to go. And then I did a little looking around and I see that Ypsilanti Township has had beehives on their property for nine years. Not that we need to do what they do. Ypsilanti City has allowed bees. We have a lot of vacant parcel, some that we own outright for certain purposes, some that's been preserved. Some of those parcels, now I'm not suggesting all, I heard a suggestion about West Side Preserve and I, that didn't come from me, but, but some of the land that the township owns could be beneficial 
for beekeeping to, to help with the health of the environment, to help with uh, farming. And I have a lot of whereas clauses. I'm not a beekeeper. And uh, I put together a draft, and this is only a draft. This is not an action item tonight. And I, and I welcome input from this board. I welcome input from the public. I welcome input from beekeepers. How, how is this something that's feasible or not? And I have a, a number of whereas clauses, and then ultimately be it resolved that, uh, no pun intended, that we come up with um, a policy that promotes the placement of beehives on township parcels on which it will be appropriate. If there's a sidewalk, if there's a park, if there's a playground, or there's too much density, then that's not appropriate. But if there are some parcels of land in which it would not disturb the residents to have these bees there, and these bees would help the residents and pollinate our plants and pollinate our farms and help with our environment, then to do that. I, I have suggested policy considerations. That's not the riser policy. Riser doesn't make the policy. People who know more about this than I do. It, it's a, these are just some considerations that came off the top of my head. Uh, but but it would be up to, um, I would imagine, uh, uh, the township uh, manager uh, in conjunction with legal and in conjunction with the apiary experts and uh, who, whatever appropriate staff. So this is just an idea that I had that I'm looking for you know, constructive criticism on how to make it better and how to make it viable if it's something that we can do. Um, for instance, uh, someone said uh, remove by December 1st. If that's not a suitable date, that's why it says or other suitable date. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an idea, it's a work in progress, and I would like input to help make it a better product if it's something we can do. That's all I have to say. Thanks for bringing the idea to the board. I think um, it would be good for us to schedule a future agenda item, just a discussion yeah. on this idea, because, um, you know, yay bees. Um, but two, I think that David Reed has a, a, a good concern, because this has come up before, but we had a, a private citizen lobbying the township to put kind of a private beekeeping club on a wet, on a preserve. And at that time, we kind of looked at it and said, hey, um, David is is right. It's, my memory serves. David's not here anymore. But that we don't have clearly noted in our ordinance or other guide, kind of what some parameters are around the preserved properties. I also note, John, that um, you're not necessarily talking about preserved policies, oh, right? So you're kind of talking about a lot of different things. So I, I, we're talking about the nine and a half acres we currently lease right. to Vester Guards for their cows. I wonder about a leasing option instead of a pilot program. Like, is there, so, I mean, I think it's it's good. We, we should have a discussion about it, but I'd like to have beekeeping people here. I'd like to have, I'd like to kind of understand from um, Mariah kind of, you know, in terms of preserved lands, what, you know, if, if any limitations we have on our preserves, you know, aside from it, it just, that was in there. I, so. I mean, I'm just, you know, just spitball with it. I mean, it's the idea, it's a, it's a genesis of an idea, I guess is what I'd say, right? Is it yeah, so I think we need to have a discussion. Yeah, like, because if we start going, what's the liability? So we get spit by a bee and they're, uh, you know, they're sensitive to bees yeah. and they die. Where's our liability? Like, like, just, you know, you can take this, you got to consider all those extremes, number one, yeah. right? Where's a little bit of limitation <laughs> liability? And if they, if they, hey, if I have a beekeeping uh, facility and I make honey and I sell the honey, I'm making a profit. Yeah. How does all that, because you know all that stuff's going to come up. And is it more than bees? I think to your point, are there other things that could be beneficial, you know, to the land? Like, is there a way to harvest the land that's good for the community? And maybe it's more than just bees. And maybe it's other things, too. I don't know what those are. So like I said, I think it's just a genesis of a concept to get started. Bees might be the first one. Maybe we start with bees, but maybe it's broader than that. I don't know. I like the idea that this land is sitting there rather than go do something with it. Yeah. I guess great yeah, idea. Yeah, I just be curious. I wasn't trying to develop our land. I was no. just trying to get bees out of the environment if no one gets hurt. And if it has to just be one hive, one parcel, it's a starting point that, that I'm just yeah. trying to get you know, the community. It's going to be the mechanics. Why yeah, would we'll we'll so, a pilot versus a lease? I, I, I think, I think what I sense, John, is that uh, there's 
sort of generally a, a positive Inter reaction with, with some um, questions. Which is what I why, which is why it's under reports and right. not discussion right. or could, action. Could, or you could, could you submit it as a discussion item for a future meeting so we can have kind of a full discussion? Yeah, I, right can, people here? I, I'll, I could put it for discussion or possible action item for the next meeting. Well, we idea. But I would prefer, I would prefer discussion only because just because unless you have it all lined up by then I'll be down with it. But I'd like to know if it's you know why we're looking at a pilot instead of leasing land, and I'm like if we're proposing you know you've got listed here like the nine and a half acres we already have an active lease lease with Vestergaard, and so I'm are we considering those that we're already leasing? So I just you know we just need to talk about it. I mean everybody's down with these. I, I'm not sure the cows on the Vestergaard farm would be down with okay. these. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, uh, thank you. I don't want to take. I know it's just a little more than it's a little more than a red line. I just think we need some more expertise right. in the room to have the conversation. I agree. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you, Trusty Riser, for that report and introducing that. I'll look forward to any more discussion about that in a future meeting. Um, I believe that brings us to. Uh, the end of reports. Uh, we have one item of unfinished business. Um, and uh, this was prepared by Laura Kreps, but I don't know if she's here remotely or if you're going to speak to this, uh, yeah. Mariah. Or yep. what? I'm going to speak to this. Okay. So at your last board meeting, um, we had a presentation from the Goodrich folks about proposed uses. Um, amending the Goodrich PUD to add uses at the time that we that you had that discussion and voted on the uses because we didn't have those we didn't have a prepared ordinance in front of you so this is your um, zoning ordinance amendment for the planned unit development of Goodrich PUD and it is just listing those specific allowed uses that you approved at your last meeting very straightforward are there, are there any questions? Um, thank you for preparing this, Mariah. Um, just a well, before voting on it, I'll just note correct the typo in the to the definition language. It says in the and it got a little mixed up. And a question for you, Mariah, on the end where it says posted adoption, final publication, effective date. What does posted mean? So I didn't actually prepare this. I only prepared some of it. Okay, I'm going to strike post it. Yeah, that, that's if not an objection. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. I think the clerk certificate is a little more I, complicated than it usually is also. So just so everybody knows, I use my own certificate no matter what comes before this. Okay. Fair. <laughs> right. So are there any other modifications to the language of the resolution? Someone prepared to move the adoption of the I'll resolution. Not, not a resolution. I would, it's an ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry. I would ordinance. like to move the adoption of zoning ordinance amendment 2024-01 planned unit development, Goodrich PU development. Support by riser. Okay, so question. Moved move by Flintoff, support by riser. Discussion. Does, does this have to be a uh, voice vote? Not, not just a. We should do roll call. Yeah, I think roll this, I think this will do a roll call. Second. Are there any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Noel? Yes. Riser? Yes. Pathway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Printoff? Yes. Prezo? Yes. Motion adopted. Ordinance amendment adopted 6-0. Thank you. Um, that brings us to the new meetings, and we had moved um, the report of the Transit Advisory Committee. And I just want to point out to the Transit Advisory Committee that we did get to this before nine o'clock. So <laughs> I talked. I talked with them earlier. Um, Direct. Yeah, and um, so uh, if you uh, members of the committee would come forward to participate in this, and I will turn to Township Manager Parker to introduce this agenda item. Okay. Thank you. Um, just as some background information, the um, board of trustees established the Transit Advisory Committee um, in December of last year to evaluate uh, transit services, to do research and analyze 
um, the status of transit to date and to um, consider community engagement as part of the process and put together rec uh, recommendations on um, how we should proceed related to the um, millage for transit. And so um, I'd like to, first of all, kind of introduce members of the advisory committee and uh, their representation. So we have um, as members, um, Jan Culberson from the Planning Commission, uh, Kim Moore from Washtenaw Area Value Express, which is WAVE, um, our supervisor and myself. Uh, in addition, we also have um, technical support that has been really beneficial in moving this process forward. Um, Chris Chang, our project manager within the township, uh, Forrest Yang, the executive director for AAATA, Marie Gress from uh, WAVE, uh, Ken Anderson from AAATA. And then we had a couple of other members from WAVE as well as uh, AAATA to assist on an as-needed basis. We also had folks from Watts and Semcog. At, uh, yes, Simcog. yes, we did. Initially, I believe Semcog was involved in Watts. Yes. So uh, that's basically the uh, the advisory committee as well as the technical support team. And we did work together as a team to put together uh, the report and recommendations. I think we went through maybe 20 drafts of the report, at least 20. Okay. Um, just in terms, again, the committee purpose was to evaluate um, transit services, uh, given the fact that the um, millage expires the end of this year to provide recommendations in terms of how we should move forward. And um, as part of that process, I'd like to talk about transit funding, and then we'll have two of the committee members, Ken Anderson and Louise Ress, talk about um, transit services. So just in terms of the funding, um, the transit millage was approved by voters in 2015 for a 10-year period. Um, in 2015, the millage rate was 0.3627, and currently the rate is 0.3468 due to the Headley Amendment. Uh, the millage currently generates about $589,000 for bus and transit services. And um, again, the final levy uh, will take place in December of this year. <clears throat> what I'd like to do is maybe pass around some information. Um, the spreadsheet provides information related to transit uh, as of 2016 up until March 31st, 2024. And um, just in looking at the um, revenue and the expenditures, they're pretty consistent throughout the year with the exception as you think about uh, 2024 and then 2025, the rate increases primarily because of an increase in service delivery. So one of the questions that came up was just in reference to uh, how much money is required to maintain a nine month operating um, fund balance reserve. And that amount is shown in the shaded area at the very bottom. Uh, there is additional funding available each year. However, starting in 2024, 25, 
the cost of transit will increase by approximately $100,000 based on uh, increases in services. So for example, with transit services through AATA, uh, they'll start earlier and end later. And then the frequency will um, increase from one hour to a half an hour. So there's a cost associated with those service changes. So with that, I think I'd like to maybe have Ken and Marie talk about uh, services related to transit. Hi, I'm Ken Anderson. Um, I'm the senior planner at AAATA. And and I really want to get into detail, but that's probably, this isn't the night to do that. So just to give you guys a quick overview of the services that are operated in Scio Township. Right now, there's five fixed routes. And so fixed routes are the big buses that you see driving around up and down Jackson Road and the other places like that. The major corridor in Scio Township for transit right now is Jackson Road, and that's currently served by Route 30. Um, the entire length of the corridor from Wagner Road out to Meyer is served with big buses right now. Um, let's see, Wagner Road from Dexter down to Jackson Road, that little piece of road there is currently served by Route 31. And then Routes 26 and 29, which are the Sio Ridge Corridor and all the apartment complexes and condos out there, um, there are two routes that serve that area. Uh, there's also two routes that touch just inside the boundaries of the township out of Miller Road and M14 interchange. There's a park and ride lot out there where commuters can park their cars and get on either Route 61 or 34 and ride those into downtown Ann Arbor or the university. In addition to regular fixed route bus service, we also operate something called demand response service, which is basically door-to-door -door service required by the Federal Transit Administration. Every time that we put a fixed route out on a street, we have to provide service for seniors and people with disabilities uh, within an area of surrounding those routes with, I believe it's three quarters of a mile surrounding the route. So uh, that is specifically for those two types of people. Um, the major trip generators in Sio Township are the Meyer out on Jackson Road followed by the apartment complexes in the Sio Ridge area. Um, the, the same patterns show up for the demand response service. Sorry, I should have called that A-Ride. Uh, for the A-Ride service, the, the ridership patterns follow those as well. And so thank you, Manager Parker, for talking about the increase in service. Uh, that's all going to start in August of this year. Um, there are other millage, uh, services that are actually going to start in April, but that is an express route between Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti. So that's, you know, that people might benefit by going between those, but that isn't directly affected here. So <clears throat> speaking a little bit about ridership, um, ridership before the pandemic was fairly strong out in this area, but we found that across the, the entire region, uh, once the pandemic hit, and even as the restrictions were lifted afterwards, ridership hasn't quite recovered to where it was to the levels before the pandemic. So generally across the system, um, ridership has recovered to about 60 to 70, maybe in the mid 70s uh, percent of what it was before the pandemic. And then routes 26, 29, 30, and 31, um, they currently, the Sio Township portions of those currently have recovered to around between 55 to 60 percent in there. So they haven't quite recovered to as much as the rest of the system, but there's still, you know, there still is growth year upon year for those. Um, we are actually going to be doing a market segment analysis coming up over the next one to two years because we're trying, we want to do a study on what happened, where have people gone, where are they? I mean, we have our gut feelings of, you know, a lot of people are now working remotely aren't using it as much, but we will be doing this study to kind of help those along so that, you know, we can bring more information to you about those services as well. I'll turn it over to you. 
Great. My name is Marie Gress. I'm the executive director at WAVE. WAVE is Western Washtenaw Area Value Express. We're a nonprofit 501c3, um, and we provide rides to all in Western Washtenaw County, Sio Township included. We've actually been providing the transportation to Sio Township since 2008, before your millage even started. Um, and now your millage dollars, you pay AATA and AATA subcontracts with us so we can continue providing services, particularly um, Ken mentioned fixed routes. We have two fixed routes that come through SIO. The first one we call the community connector that goes Chelsea, Dexter, and then here to SIO. And we have a purposeful trans, um, transfer point at Meyer with AATA. The other one is the Jackson Road connector, and that just goes along the Jackson Road corridor um, down to co-housing and, and all of that. Um, that section of Jackson Road where uh, that route goes, or both routes go, they both hit those spots and they're served every hour. We also have a door-to-door -door service as well available for your residents. Um, and then as far as data goes, uh, you have the data chart in your in your report that was provided to you. Um, and what Ken said about their numbers um, pre and post COVID is, is the same that we've experienced as well. Okay. Um, any questions before we move on? I have some questions. Thanks so much, everybody, for your work. Thank you, Joyce. Um, a question on the costs for WAVE. I see the, the projected cost for AAATA on a table here. What are the projected costs for WAVE? Yeah, so the numbers that you see for AATA, our numbers are Im embedded in theirs because your contract is with them currently. Um, currently, yep. And they pay us um, this year, it's around 115,000 to provide the services that we do. Um, one of the things we talked about is if you wanted to add stops along our existing routes, um, the one that makes the most sense coming up soon is on Baker Road. Our community connector comes down that, and so it makes sense to have a stop as you develop that. Um, and so then there would be cost increases that go with adding additional stops. But right now it's about 115. So additional stops, but also we were considering additional sort of frequency. Yes, we were also looking at frequency. Mm -hmm. And we briefly talked about um, the opportunity to maybe look at additional stops like in certain areas of the township. Yeah, which would be an expense beyond what we're paying now. And so the just to follow up on that, so the capital costs I see at 51 or 59,000, which looks kind of I'm I'm curious what is included in those capital costs. And what is included in those capital costs? And would something like an additional bus stop be included in capital costs if the funding were available for that? I can answer capital costs first and then I'll turn it back to you. Um, because WAVE serves a rural area, rural Western Washtenaw. Um, our vehicles are covered in full by 5310 funding from the state. It's 80% state, 20% federal funds. And so we don't have to rely on um, like local funds for capital costs the okay. same way that AATA does. Okay, so these are AATA kind of capital yes. maintenance costs. For okay. vehicle replacement, you know, keep it, things like that. Okay. And so are there other kind of one-time costs that the committees proposing. Um, I understand there's the increase in service, but when you talk about like additional stops and things, you know, an additional bus stop, how would that get done? What's the, what would be the process for that? Well, there's, if I may, oh, okay. um, there's, so there's two ways to think about additional stops. One is additional stops as part of the service that's being provided. And I think okay. that's, that's what we were, that's what we, that's oh, where okay. our focus is, but there is, uh, a, kind of a pending community benefit from the Woodview Commons development yeah. to put in a physical structure for a bus stop right. somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, that's and kind of what I was wondering is, is are the service costs, do the service um, kind of the proposal for the costs over the next 10 years, do they include an anticipation of kind of the, the capital, that sort of stuff, like, you know, additional bus stops or other infrastructure, whatever's, 
needed stuff. So, so that's not factored into okay. what's being proposed. Certainly, uh, is something that could be considered. However, I think as the committee met and had the discussion, um, we were somewhat concerned concerned about uh, increasing costs to the extent where um, it might change our recommendation related to um, what amount should be levied or requested of voters. So we tried to maintain that level of balance between what um, residents are paying now and what should be considered moving forward. Okay. Yeah. And I think I think for me, I'm just curious about kind of what the, just like we did with the fire or anything else, yeah. Brenna, what's our fully loaded costs, right, that we need? And then kind of how do we fund it? I understand they're related. Yeah. yeah. But, and, and Joyce, thank you for um, preparing the um, historic code revenue and expenditure and fund balance. I think what I was looking at this as well earlier today, because I was like, how is the bus fund doing? And and I think one of my, something that was a surprise and, um, you know, something we need to address is, you know, the fund balance here is, is we consistently have brought in revenues more than our expenses. And right now, even if you add in, you know, 180,000 more of expenses, our fund balance would still be, you know, roughly $500,000 above the nine month minimum. And so I'm, I'm uncomfortable um, asking for more money when we've got, you know, um, funding available. I want to just have a plan for it. And that could be part of our capital plan, could be something, but that's why I was wondering what, if there had been consideration given to, you know, the existing funding that we have and, and how to responsibly allocate that. Right. And so this is the first, if I can take a stab at it, the first time I've seen this chart tonight. And prior to that, I was under the impression that we were bringing in less money on the millage than what the actual costs were. So I guess that's not true, but- And that, I had been under that right. impression too. Okay. And and I got that because, because, because okay. Yeah, because every year when we go to budget time, but then when I actually looked at it- Okay. You know, Okay. And, and actually, we we will be bringing in less money uh, as we move forward. If um, you know, if for example, it's reduced beyond what was in place beforehand, um, primarily because the cost has increased, close to six hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And then the other consideration too, when I look at like. Uh, Plant Moran put together the report. The fiscal years are different. So, you know, we have our fiscal year, and then we have um, the fiscal year for AATA. So there's some there's some overlap there. And, and yeah. by the report, you mean the, the revenue expenditure report, the historical. Yeah. And so you got a couple of things happening. You have um, the situation where the service cost is increasing starting in October of this year mm -hmm. uh, beyond what we paid in the past. Yep. And then you have the difference in the fiscal year. So all of our expenses are not shown the same in the report. Right, but, yeah. but even cumulatively, well, right. I you, guess yeah, yeah. If you look well if you look at it from a cumulative standpoint, yeah. if you have one point let's say we got one million dollars. A million dollars a in million fund dollars balance. fund balance. Back out the three hundred minimum. Yeah, and you look at your reserve at three hundred thousand. Yeah. Yep. You have about seven hundred thousand yep. remaining. And then if you look at the increase in service services over that time frame moving forward, if you I guess my comment is if you reduce the millage, will you have enough money to actually pay your expenses? And as a result, uh, so would your revenue and expenses balance out without using the- And I'm not rate? making any proposal about a yeah. millage rate. What I'm asking, I'm just trying to get a, a clear sense of what our kind of projected, you know, real costs are. And, and it, if there's space, which it looks like there may be to 
propose some kind of one-time capital yeah, I think you could do that. You know, but, but I and I don't know for sure. I'm just looking at a balance sheet. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think you could do that. A trustee riser. Yeah, and, and, and one of the points I want to make and maybe ask about is uh to, to Jan and Kim, as you know, coming through the planning commission are things like crossroads, which seems like that could be a detour on the 26 or 29. Or uh, if we got density there, apartment and multifamily housing, that's a, that's a place where AAADA service seems seems appropriate. We're we're building out Wood Woodview Commons, correct? And, and does the bus currently go there? I'm going to address that. Yeah. My, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So oh, you sorry. might want to finish the yeah, recommendation. Okay. So yeah, we we've got <laughs> things, we got Goodrich coming with. Yeah. We've got things coming down the pike from a from a residential housing that are on our bus loops now. That, mm -hmm. Anyways, I don't want to say it better. I yield. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think that the next part of our presentation is in reference to uh, recommendations. And um, we have uh, Jan and Kim that will provide comments in that regard. Thank you very much. Um, so to answer your question, Trustee Riser, there's two uh, parts of our, the first uh, on the section of the report, which talks about our recommendations. Um, number one, it talks about some phased in or anticipated expansion. So one of those areas is right now, WAVE covers Jackson Road as well as the AATA number 30 Jackson Road. And one of the routes that comes from Chelsea goes down, ends up coming to Meyer, goes down Jackson Road, um, as well as the Jackson Road connector from that way it provides. So we were concerned about um, two things. One is we have a development that's coming on board on Baker Road and Marshall, and another area uh, right there at um, on Jackson, just east of. Baker that you just mentioned. And um, right now, the number 30 route, the AATA bus route, does not go out that far. It only goes to Meyer back. So we rely on way service to bridge that gap right now um, with our Jackson Road connector. Um, and and it's, it's, it's put in the report as an expansion because right now we don't need it. But that was a big uh, concern of the committee as well as frequency, as uh, Supervisor Hathaway pointed out, if you right now those buses are running every hour from Wave, I don't know that that's enough to lure people out to catch mass transit uh, at that new development on Jackson Road. So we were talking about expansion in the sense of creating more frequency through Wave as well. So that's item number one. Uh, we also, I think a lot of people in our community are not aware that we have door-to-door -door service right now. It, you don't have to be a senior. You don't have to be handicapped. You can be, want to, you can be a 16-year-old wanting to go to the library and then research a paper. You can, we can take you to Waze, take you, pick you up at your door, take you to the Dexter Library, or we can pick you up at your door, take you to the Ann Arbor Library over <clears throat> down, down the road on Oak Valley. Uh, down the road from uh, the queue. So um, I think a lot of people are not aware of it. And, and unfortunately, our, our survey didn't hit that part of it. So um, we, as everybody knows, we have an in increasing elderly population. Uh, and so uh, I just wanted to kind of get the word out about that, about the door-to-door -door service um, that we're already having. And we're looking at trying to expand that as well. Um, We've also talked with AATA about having a transfer slip mechanism such that if you get on at our uh, wave bus, picks you up at Sio Farms, and you connect with the AATA bus at Meyer, right now you pay a wave fare, and then when you get on at the AATA bus at Meyer, you pay another fare. And so we've recommended uh, to AATA I know that Wave is very eager to, to get on board with that, that there'd be one fare. So you would pay your fare to Wave 
and you get a transfer slip from the wave driver, that would be good for 90 minutes. So you could stop at Meyer, pick up your groceries, et cetera, um, and go home. But and so we're still waiting to hear the final approval. I think that that had to go through uh, AATA's board of directors because it, it implicated their fares, and that's all within their purview. So it also worked the other way too. It would work both ways. If you've come in from downtown Ann Arbor, you've been working, and you live at Sile Farms, you get off, you get a trade, pay your pay your fare to AATA, get a transfer, pick up whatever you want, admire, get back on the wave bus and go back home. So that's something we're real excited about. You know, I know I'm kind of pressuring ADT to, to, and they're supposed to get back with us this month. So we're waiting to hear about that. And I think that makes a lot of sense because all, all the services that, well, I shouldn't say that, but all the line services that AAT provides, that's been in place for many, many decades, even the 90 minute um, uh, time frame. So. I see that as a really a, a big benefit for our citizens, our riders. Um, I think that's, oh, renew and restore the millage. <laughs> it's my last uh, item. Um, as I think someone mentioned earlier, we're looking to renew and restore 0.3627. That was last year's 10 year millage and we're looking to renew and restore that. It's my understanding that um, in speaking with our assessor that uh, with the numbers and the evaluations going up on properties that we should have more than enough to pay for. for uh, and at the time, I'm still thinking we weren't bringing in sufficient amount of dollars for paying just operations, not even dealing with cap capital. But and at the time that was with the discussion centered around. So I apologize. Um, no, no, not at all. Like I said, I think for, for two years, I was under the wrong impression that we weren't okay. bringing in enough on, on the bus and every budget season, it would be a discussion and I was wrong. <laughs> um, and and when you look at the balance sheet, I'm actually concerned for the opposite reason yes. that we are accruing too much fund balance and that's also not a position I want to be in. Well, this is kind of stepping out of my little template here, but I know one of the issues that have come up for our community is um, having uh, shelters at certain locations. And yeah, it's my understanding that it gets complicated because there's certain areas that AAATA, based on their criteria, won't put a shelter in. And so there could be some use of those dollars if we have enough to be able to, because you have to put in a sidewalk as well. So um, that's just one idea of what monies could be spent on, spent for. There's a lot of need. Yeah. All right. Thanks. In other words, what I love about this is we get for, you know, the renew and restore, we actually get enhanced services and we have a bucket of money to be able to look at expanding those services as you know, some of these developments come online. So to me, that's really uh, great. And if we have some one-time capital expenses, that's good too. However, I get to do um, the recommendations around education, outreach, and ongoing collaborations. And those include one, and these are some ideas and discussions from uh, within the group um, that we didn't want to lose. Um, because we thought we all learned a lot. Um, uh, it was a discovery process um, in, in our dialogue. So one, um, to work with the DDA and see if it makes sense to have establish a go pass for um, folks, employers within our DDA. That's similar to what Ann Arbor does where you can get a go pass for like 15 bucks and you can go on- Unlimited ridership. Unlimited ridership. And uh, then also, um, I wanna thank specifically Chris, cause you were instrumental in getting the community survey out. Um, and the recommendation is it did launch on March 8th. It would be great to keep it up through the end of April and then have a, uh, then we'll have a, um, a little bit more um, data to deal with. And right now we got 104 responses, probably a few more since that. I looked at it today, it's about 140-ish. 
which is rolling, so. awesome, which is awesome. So um, some really good feedback um, uh, from that survey, and you can see the preliminary feedback in the attachments. Um, then moving on um, to two really important engagement strategies. One is uh, setting up a, um, an engagement plan and a committee to do that around the millage and, you know, talking about what, um, you know, public transportation. One of the things that we all recognized, it was very hard to describe, right, the, the services that exist within SIO. So I think, um, you know, having some sort of map, cohesive map of, of where you can go, how you can go, what the, you know, what the, um, the, the cost is, et cetera, would really help um, with the millage and ongoing, right? You can always add to it. Um, then, um, and there's there are all sorts of points around this millage sort of engagement education committee. Um, and I think, it, one, it's a great way to spread the word about public transit and what's available because uh, I wasn't aware of some of the stuff that, I wrote AATA and Ann Arbor all the time. Um, and then the other one is an ongoing subcommittee. And the recommendations to do it um, under the planning commission um, so that transportation can be more holistically looked at, not in our um, master plan um, overall within the township, so it becomes more integral. We don't want to lose the collaboration and the contact that we had with SEMCOG, Watts, AAA, TA, and WAVE. Um, I think it, having everybody at the table, it, it would probably wouldn't be a committee that would meet monthly, but it, it would certainly be a quarterly kind of thing. And, and this also um, comes up with the SEMCOG grant. There's funding around some of these transportation things that, that we would miss out if we don't have some folks really looking at that. So, and th that transportation committee could also be, um, you know, looking at, um, you know, ways of making sure we're making, we're spending the dollars wisely um, and looking at when those expansions take place and making those recommendations. So it could tie in with master planning, it could tie in with our developments um, that are uh, getting approved, et cetera. So, um, though, and, and I think that will also increase ridership, you know, as people know more about how to use public transportation and we make it easier and more frequent. Um, so those are the, uh, the remaining recommendations. I have a question with respect to, um, there's a model motion that talks about an attached resolution. But so when I printed it out, there was an attached resolution, but there's also a resolution on our on our table. It, this is a substitute or or is it, is it, it should be the same. Okay. Because um, I am I, I would move that we adopt the attached resolution uh, Placing on the August 6, 2024 ballot a proposal to renew and restore the SIO Township Transportation Millage at 0 0.3627 mil for a period of 10 years, 2025 to 2034, inclusive for the purpose of providing funds for public transportation services in SIO Township. I'm not prepared to support. We discuss more. Oh well, I, I, I just want to get it on the floor so we can discuss it. Well, I'll I'll support it. So it's moved by Riser, support by Hathaway, and now we'll have some further discussion. I just want to thank again, committee. You've given us a ton of information. First time we're looking at it. We've got eight recommendations in here. I recognize, in the interest of time, there's some interest in us moving forward on the one recommendation tonight regarding it. So if we could focus on that, but I do want to say, I want to spend more time with the committee, maybe at a subsequent meeting to talk about those other seven recommendations. Well, and, and I actually, uh, is it okay for me to speak at this? Sure, point? absolutely. Okay. Of course. And actually it would, it would make sense to spend more time with some of the recommendations. I, I think yeah. we raised the point about um, the amount in the fund balance beyond the reserve. I think there's a couple of things that could be considered. And, you know, if we're talking about one-time improvements, maybe either 
this committee or the committee that we're discussing related to the planning commission could be a part of that discussion. I, I think so. Yeah. I think I think more immediately. Um, so so yes. I mean, I, I like the idea of a committee. Um, I think we can talk about it at a future date. I think one thing that's happened with bus services, and I'm so grateful that you all have picked this up, is that you know it's been kind of an area that's been sort of under managed over the years and under attended to. And when things get under attended to, sometimes we have we miss some opportunities, and that's what that you know fund balance increasing is is not having it in a capital plan, not you know putting it forth, not you know kind of thinking oh this is just a contract. Think of it as like. The checks I signed to AAA TA and and not like the Sio Township bus services. So I'm really glad that you kind of launched this, and I think this will help us manage and plan in the future. Um, I I am I I have to say I'm I I it is uncomfortable, I'm not unwilling, but I am uncomfortable being asked to vote on a millage proposal the first time we talk about it. Um, if we think about everything with fire, how much we, you know, had, you know, kind of the projections. And I think that what you were saying is you believe 10 years is the right length of time, that there aren't going to be big changes in the 10 years, and that the same amount of money is going to cover us. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So um, I just want to confirm that because we're, we're making a decision to do it again for 10 years. Um, it sounds like the other developments won't be so different. The I just have a question, a simple one, Mariah, on the resolved clause. Yes. And maybe you mentioned it, but who came up with the, it is estimated that the 0.3627 mil would raise approximately 616980? That's from the assessor. Yeah. Thank and, you. Andrew and Garrett. And um, could we add a period? No. <laughs> and do we think that it is clear enough that it would be assessed beginning in 2025, given that we're, you know, asking a year early, this has come up with some of our language with other proposals? Well, I think it's clear enough um, because we this this current millage doesn't expire until the end of 2024, right? So we're not collecting twice this year. Is that, is that your question? Yeah, I just want to make sure voters would be clear because they often get confused. I know I hear language of renew and restore. Um, that is not in this language um, before us tonight to vote on. And it so is, it is where it's ten, ten, for a period of 10 years be renewed and restored. Okay, I see. So, so and, and for those of you that don't that aren't familiar with the renew and restore, renew is we're renewing the millage itself. Restore is that we're taking it back up to its original to amount. Hadley clawback. Rolling okay. back from Headley. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're getting back up to where we were before Headley started chipping away. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I don't have any other questions about the proposal language. I do do wonder um, you know, about the you know, I, I'm wondering if maybe this committee or some subset, whoever you think, Joyce, but couldn't kind of quickly um, engage on the capital one time question. And if it could be, you know, a proposal that comes back to the board pretty quickly, whether it's part of the capital improvement plan or an amendment to that. But what I think we should really do going forward is have fund 230 as part of our capital improvement plan, unless our Township attorney tells us otherwise, you know, the proposal says that the funding is for the purpose of providing funds for public transportation services in Sio Township. I don't know that that we would have to define maybe to some extent what what's inclusive of that language. Agree. And then from there we can actually sit down and talk about what type allowable of costs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be my one concern, because I don't know that we've ever spent the bus fund on anything but these two contracts. Yeah, And I would want to make sure that that's in line with the voters' intention. Actually, just one. Um, well, contract and subcontract. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, I think the other thing, too, and it's not something that um, that we would need to do tonight, but if there's an interest in using 
part of those dollars and fund balance for one-time expenditures, you know, we, we probably do need to identify what's allowable and what is not. Agreed. And then there were things that um, the committee did discuss, but we did not include uh, them in the proposal. So maybe we could go back and revisit those items as well. One, yeah. one, one thing to bear in mind, um, I've learned this uh, through the bus shelters that were paid for by the DDA, is that um, AAATA will sort of accept bus shelters, sometimes a little unwillingly perhaps, but they'll accept them and take responsibility for maintaining them if they are on a fixed AAATA route. But any bus shelters that we create that are outside of an AAATA route, that's on us. So one way of thinking of uh, possibly is not just the creation of the bus shelters, but also the maintenance of the bus shelters that are outside of the AAATA fixed route. So any, for right now, anything beyond on Jack's Road that, that we've established a bus shelter beyond Meyer to the west is still on Silo Township. That's our responsibility. And like what factors go into where you put a shelter? Like density, how many people use it? whether there's you know, they have to walk there and wait a long time, whether it's seniors or people with disability or like, I don't know, like what goes into, should we put a shelter here or not? Yes. So everything that you just mentioned, we just use as factors. Uh, before we got into the pandemic, we also be really strict and say that it'd be 50 or more people boarding a day, but everything's up in the air right now. So we could work as a subject committee for within the township boundaries kind of coming up with what those parameters yeah. should be, because I don't think it should just be based on numbers anymore. There are definitely different factors we could take into it. So, yeah, I think our committee could okay. get back together for that purpose. Yeah, and I, I wonder if, you know, I'm just thinking, if we put this on for August, if we act tonight, put this on for August, as soon as we put it on, it's a huge amount of very good, fair, you know, deserved scrutiny by voters about what are we paying for. So. Um, you know, do we need it? Why are we renewing now? Why not next year? You know, this fund balance. And so I would ask if if this team and Joyce, whatever configuration you think you need or with Plan Moran, but even like um, a down and dirty mini CIP for the bus fund, like within, you know, 30 days. And the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, I'm thinking of John Boyle. I'm thinking about you know, how many times, um, you know, I know the fire services guidance committee was different because it was a bigger ask, but like, you know, the projections, the financial projections and the plans, um, I just don't feel right about kind of going forward without a plan for spending the money we already have responsibly in line with the will of the voters. And it might be a good chance to then be able to message to voters and by renewing this, we'll be able to, you know, do these capital improvements. And we didn't get to the next we, steps on the well, we, Yeah. <laughs> and I also think before we close on that one, um, the one place where we can be helpful on that is the FTA is very picky and very specific about how they like to spend funds. And so any place that we, we can basically, and Marie is under, is under these guidelines too. We can drop a bus stop pole anywhere we want, any, you know, on the side of the road, in the middle of a hill, as long as it's considered, you know, a place that's, that you can safely board. It's when you want to make any sort of improvements on top of that, adding cement pads or lead walks and things like that, that it has, we have to be connected into an existing sidewalk network. So with other townships, um, that may be a place where this plan can be very helpful is if there are particular stops that the committee thinks that, you know, would really benefit from some sort of a shelter, but the sidewalk stops 100 yards down there, you know, that we're, as an agency, we're not allowed to spend the money to build those sidewalk extensions. But once those extensions are done, you know, we can provide the shelter or a bench or something, or, you know, that part of it. If that's helpful. Please. Um, all I was going to say is in terms of next steps, because I don't want to drag this out, um, but um, obviously the next step, should we move forward and adopt this this evening, would be for the clerk to communicate it to the 
county clerk, uh, right, to put it on ballot. And then we would pivot to, um, as a township, to educating the public about this and ex in addressing some of those questions. Um, and um, it sounds like tonight there's also an interest in having the committee meet, get, back um, together. get back together, get the, yeah. get, get the band I mean, back together. <laughs> and, and I feel that if, if so it's our committee sorry. by your charge is disbanded March 31st. Right. I was going to address that. Okay. Well, I was going to say, so that those were some obvious next steps. There's also something that the township can't do, and that is um, be involved in actually the campaigning for this. And so that is something that will happen separate from uh, the township. Right. Um, you know, I have like two more motions before I want to act on this one, but, you know, okay. <laughs> but I know we've got it on the table. So what's the proper procedure? I well, call a question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I I wanted to okay. say I actually Sorry, it's more, more discussion. More discussion. Yeah. So. I I just want to be sure that financially these projections are sound. Well, I, I think this is the first time I've seen these, it. these aren't projections. This is historical information. Okay. That's okay. Historical. This is well, we don't have projections okay. beyond the two but, years. But I do think you know as part of um, the process moving forward. You know, I want to sit, sit down with uh, PM Gap and look at the numbers again, especially as we talk about 24, 25 going forward to make sure that um, we, make, we have the amount necessary in the uh, reserve to um, handle any potential shortfalls going forward. Because, you know, the way I see it with the millage that will generate and then with the expenses, they're going to be almost equal. Yeah, and I think I and that very well may be Joyce. I yeah. I don't have enough information to see that. What I see yeah. is the yeah. historical trend of accruing fund balance. Yeah, and and so I I think what I'd like to kind of formally request with a with a motion and tweak it as I go something like you know a motion um, to request. That the manager and transit committee um, convene to um, develop a written financial projection of 10 years of transit costs, including a capital improvement plan for Fund 230 within. 30 days. I can support that. And the reason I would make that motion within 30 days is because like the education, what are we educating about? Oh, we need to go out, you know, but we have these capital, you know, ideas. If we put them in a plan, then we can communicate about them. And I hear what you're saying about the, the years being different, but without the written fiscal projection, all we have is the historical, right. which shows an increasing fund balance. So I'd like to see the financial projection that shows what you all know and are confident in and are telling us is that we need um, to renew now right. and that there are enough transit needs operating in capital to justify so that. We don't have that information. We, we have, we, yeah. That information is yeah. on that side of the yeah. table. Yeah. And, that, and that's and what Joe... That, Right there. And yeah, that's what Joyce was saying, PM Gap, our interim yeah, finance yeah. director. Yeah. I think they should um, work with you and, and develop that. It can be one page written financial projection, including a capital improvement <clears throat> plan for transit. Can I suggest that we take the motions one by one and take them in the order that they're made? Yeah, right? I'd like to take this motion first. I could. That's why I asked for the procedure. Can we hold? So I want to make one. another comment. We just went through the rejection of fire proposal that we had on the ballot. Residents want clarity about the costs. Yeah. And I don't feel that we're real clear on it here tonight. I think we need a little bit longer. Well, I, I think we're talking about two different things. Yeah. But well, I'm still concerned here. Tonight. One is the, uh, 
renewal, and the other one is developing a capital plan, which was not the charge of the committee. Oh, I'm not talking yeah. about. I was just saying, capital I think we're plan. talking about two different things. I mean, I don't even know that we have enough information yet about proposing a renewal. <laughs> That's my concern. Well, we have a deadline. May 14. Yeah, but we also have a deadline in terms of, you know, there's only so much time to work with and we're already tight in terms of putting together an education campaign for um, the voters. Right. I, th I think- But um, what would we be educating them on? It's just, it's just getting a little more detail about what our plans are. Right, so um, I'm not averse to doing the motions in the order that you said, but I am, very concerned, um, Trustee Noel, about the idea of delaying because we need to move forward with the efforts that flow from putting this on the ballot and um, delaying further before we, we know that we don't have the is not going to help that. It's going to make it very difficult. I think we know enough, if, if, I, if I can speak for the committee, I think we know enough about the costs and the fact that the township um, wants to continue to have bus services, that we know that we need to renew this millage. And I think we looked at what the uh, cost, what it would generate if it was rolled, if it was at the lower level right now, the Headley rollback level, and continue to roll back from that level rather than restoring it to its original level from 2015, the tax rate that we had at that time. Um, and then having the Headley Amendment effect from there, because you have to remember that that's also happening. The Headley Amendment is ratcheting down the tax rate as you go. So it's there's a lot of different moving parts to this, but I, I, I think the committee is, uh, was confident looking at the projections that we had for the purchase of service agreement with ADA and where their plans are headed, that this uh, renewal and restoration of the village would pay for that cost what we discovered is that it would generate enough of a margin beyond that that we could look at expanding services from wave that would sort of align with aaata's expansion plans or um yeah i guess that's what you call it i thought wave services were included under aata the cost the the, the, car, they, the their revenue primarily comes from a different source. It comes through, I think, AAATA. This is another thing that we heard. But what we're talking about is an additional contract with Wave to go beyond the services that they are currently providing to sort of bring up um, the level of service along the Jackson Road corridor to align with what AAATA is planning. So AAATA is going to go from one hour intervals to half hour intervals if we don't provide additional funds to wave then they're going to be out of alignment but if we do provide a you know a, you know by comparison a relatively modest sum to wave they can bring their uh, frequency of service up to the same level so that it it feels to the riders especially if there's a transfer slip as if it's kind of a seamless service all the way from um, Wagner to uh, Baker Road so I'm supportive of bus service, but I just, this is a lot, a lot to absorb. You've been on the committee, you've been on the committee and I'll look at you guys have, and you know, I'm hearing some of this for the first time. I understand it. And, and we learned a lot. I, I think you heard that from the committee, everybody on the committee learned a lot in the process. Um, so we're, we're sharing the benefits of our, of that learning with everyone here. But we're also very mindful of the time frame that we have to work with in terms of spreading that information out to the people who will actually be making the decision when it comes. Uh, yeah, we were told that we needed to make sure we had were prepared to get back with you so, yep. it, so for the August ballot yeah, and yeah. all of that. that we, Definitely. So we would have these then. two okay. April meetings to consider. So I'm going to support my motion. I'm going to support your motion. Um, I plan on voting for both of them. I want to proceed tonight with with renewing the millage, uh, uh, restoring and renewing the millage. And then I also support your uh, doing a deeper dive into the capital and, 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 and into the services. So that's just 
my take on it. So I would hope that we could vote soon on these and move on to other matters because we have guests here. Yeah, and like I said, I'm just saying it's it's I appreciate everybody's work. I'm I I understand you want to move forward with this. I want to have time to talk about the other seven recommendations, maybe at a subsequent meeting. I I just said, and it's the timing of it all. I just said I'm uncomfortable. You know, I'm not opposing it tonight, but I'm just uncomfortable. Just ideally, we wouldn't have one board meeting where we, you know, talk about a millage proposal and adopt it. And we think about, you know, everything else that usually goes into, you know, multiple board meetings. So that's all it is. Um, and in particular, in, in kind of, um, I, I would like to, Go back if I could restate the motion I made and Kathy, I think you support it. I did. Did, but I want to hear the motion. Yeah. <laughs> and I um I I'm writing it down here. So let me see if I've got it right and if it's acceptable to you, Joyce. I'm a manager, a uh, motion to request that the manager committee and PM Gap develop a written tenure, ten, written tenure financial projections for transit services, including a CIP for fund 230. So I, I so guess what do you suggest? Uh, when you had mentioned within 30 days when you're referring to looking at the uh, fund balance to determine if there's funding available for one time improvements. Is that I that's what I mean by the, and I could so say including what? any one time improvements as, as well as the financial projections of okay, let's let's spread this, you know this out over 10 years we've got our revenue right. we've got our projected costs that's all i mean is like projected 10-year revenue projected 10-year expenditures yeah including any suggested one-time capital yeah that yeah we could, we could look at that okay because i mean i i think it's important to have it and again just down and dirty we know it's an estimate but then we have something to be able to discuss and then we'll also know what the kind of priority capital expenditures should be. Are you comfortable with that motion? Is it I'm comfortable with the motion. Do you feel that's enough? Um, yeah, I, I do. I feel like with that um, and the couple of, with that, I can support um, placing it on the ballot. Um, but so then I want to- Why don't we have the vote on your motion first and then we'll turn to the uh, to uh, trustee risers okay. motion. So it was moved by Flintoff, support by Noel. And please read it just one more time. Sure. A motion to request that the manager committee and PM GAP develop written 10 year financial projections for transit services, including any one time capital improvements from fund 230. Um, you want to say 30 days, 45 days, I mean, probably 30 days. Yeah, probably 30 days. Yeah, well, I think, I think 30 days. Cause we're going to, as soon as we do this tonight, yeah, we're going right. to have to have answers. We don't have, right. but we've got a deadline to get followed. Well, we, 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 we have to, we do have to get the committee together and that does take a little bit of, yeah, work, so. it does. But, but really I think PM gap and, you know, you have the experts here. Right. It should be pretty quick work. I would hope. Okay. To get it done. So that's the motion. Um, if you would please call the roll. Sure. Uh, Noel? Yes. Riser? Yes. Hathaway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Flintoft? Yes. Prezo? Yes. Motion adopted. Thank you. Okay. That brings us back to Riser's motion to approve the resolution, to adopt the resolution. I would just um, fix the typo at the top and add the period on the question. Is that acceptable to you, Trustee? Of Ryan? course. <laughs> yeah. All right, please call the roll. All right, Noel? Yes. Reiser? Yes. Hathaway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Linthoff? Yes. Rizzo? Good. All right, resolution adopted, six year. Thank you, everyone. And right. thanks, Chris. You didn't get called on, but you probably are not worried about that. <laughs> Thank you. Just one other question. So with the other uh, recommendations, um, any suggestions on how we should proceed? Yeah. 
I well, some of them are service recommendations. I guess the one I wanted to talk more about um, was kind of the two committees that are proposed, but I don't think we need to talk about that tonight. But uh, those were the two I would prioritize maybe for board discussion at our next regular meeting. Or whatever timeline you're ready for, but I think okay. I think we need to keep keep this moving. Yes. So you want us to come back? Indefinitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to put a little handout back. <laughs> 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 you. Thank you for your work. Yeah, thank, thank you. Great everybody. job. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for being so patient, too. And you're not done with us. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be coming for those numbers. <laughs> you, too. You, too. Me. We were putting those together, so I'm glad that that's work that's already yeah. done. So yeah, well, um, Manager Perko will definitely work with you to get those projections together. Thank you. All right, let's move on to uh, item J2. Um, and this, Brandon, is, I think, one of your items. Uh, Brandon's. So this is agenda item J Actually, it's agenda item J1, excuse me. Um, it is the 2024 GMC Sierra 1500 and 2024 GMC 2500, probably saying that wrong, with warning lights and decked toolbox. Um, when I first got hired here, one of the first things I did was look at the fleet and see what kind of shape that it was in. Um, when I looked at it, I noticed that we had a outdated, rusted van um, sitting in the back that wasn't being used. Uh, you can't open up most of the side compartments in the trunk space uh, due to some damage. When you open up the uh, doors, the seats are completely torn and missing parts. Um, and it's definitely uh, in need of being re uh, replaced. So in this proposal, there is a trade-in value that was offered from LaFontaine for $1,500. Um, also, I looked at the F-250, which is a truck that our supervisor um, was using. It's a 2006 with 147,000 miles on it. Right, <laughs> uh, field supervisor. Um, and that is rusted, the back tailgate don't work. Um, and uh, needs to be replaced as well. There's been numerous uh, repairs done to it. And so based on that information and knowing that we are working on a capital improvement plan and knowing the direction of hiring two more employees and making accommodations to have enough vehicles to accommodate the new staff, uh, the request is for two additional vehicles to be bought, um, the van, can either be traded in for $1,500 or if the board wishes can be um, dealt with a different a different way of your choosing. Um, not a huge impact on cost, as you can see. Um, and uh, currently right now, both trucks are about 51,000, 52,000. I don't have the quotes for the lights to be put in. The deck toolbox is $1,000 a piece per vehicle. Uh, the warning lights are probably going to be $3,000 or less. Um, so each vehicle will probably come in right around fifty-five dollars to $56,000 fully equipped, uh, bringing it under budget of our capital improvement um, outline. And uh, so my request is for the board to um, hopefully approve these two trucks so we can have reliable vehicles for um, five to six more years going forward. Thank you. Are there questions? Um, yeah, just a couple. Um, the model motion, I just want to offer maybe a couple edits to make it more clear. Uh, the strike to be purchased after March 31st and to just add some clarity um, that and to waive bidding requirements um, do to um, the, I don't know how to say this. I should have been more prepared. Sorry. Wave bidding requirements due to the quotes um, being. So I, I do want to. Because they've all been pre bid, right? Correct. This is already 
done being yeah. sorry, this is already has been been using my deal pricing. Of my yeah. deal pricing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Just, just something in there to make clear that we're getting the best um deal. And it does include an additional GM municipal discount. The term typically is favorite nation pricing. Is it really? Favorite nation. Okay, yeah. I'm going with it. Yeah, believe me, I get hit with it all the time. All right. Well, that just um, means you get the best. And then best we deal. should have something in here that makes clear that this we would also be authorizing lights that aren't. Yes, we can add that in the motion model motion, correct? Just so that we can authorize that. How about, that how about to achieve the purchase and the equipping? Of a new and equipping with lights. Oh, it does. It's equipping and other things. Is it other things? Uh, it's the lights and then a, a one toolbox for each vehicle. Or whatever. Okay. Yeah. With lights and toolbox. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not doing any painting or anything. You're not doing stuff. Nope. Uh, okay. If we didn't get the new vehicles, I do have additional. Township solid utility um, magnets that were purchased recently, um, and so those will. Yeah, those are working well enough. I mean, we just started are. that because Andrea was driving her car. And she just smack it. Yeah, I, I like it. It's, it makes it easier to trade them in down the road. We don't. It, it makes it uh, a little bit neater. So I don't. I don't see any um, disadvantages to it. I just want to note that there were no vehicles proposed in years two through six in your capital plan. Correct. Is that plan? Um, at that at this point in time, um, depending on the direction that we continue to go with building maintenance and taking care of the grounds, um, potentially, because I was unclear of the direction, um, based on the unclarity of if we're going to keep maintaining it ourselves. Right now, a water and sewer truck, the F-250 that I'm talking about, I would have traded in in this situation. But seeing how we have probably decided to maintain our own grounds, I... Can we buy the plow for that? The plow is is partially for maintaining our grounds and also maintaining the water and sewer um, buildings. That is correct. Um, However, in order to efficiently get the work done, we needed a, another vehicle specifically for the building maintenance and custodian worker to use so they could travel with the mower. And so because of that, I retained the F-250 instead of trading it in. Um, and so if the mowing goes good this year, I would, I would recommend that next year we do replace that F-250 um with a different vehicle but it was very unclear with what direction we were going to go at the time i i think i should try something to see if it's going to work you may have to change it i like that My house is on fire. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. Like, Will, you need to go. Will, you need to go. We won't do anything crazy, but you need to go. You need a ride? No, I don't need a ride. Um, you need to go home. Yeah. Go. Sorry. Um, well, no. I mean, that literally had to figure it right? I mean, you mean that literally? No, oh, I, I, you I, probably shouldn't go to your house. It's like a text message you just don't imagine getting. Um, Do they put any inclination of how bad it is in there? Just go, Will. Just Andy's on his way. Just go. Uh, drive safely. Call oh, if you need something. Uh, just go. Will, just go. Just go. Just leave it. Take your phone and go. Uh, all right. Sorry, everyone. Um, please, 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 go. All right. Um, good luck. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully you get good news there. Yeah. We'll have a chance to talk with okay. the fire chief. Yeah. Okay. Hope everything is everything's yeah. okay. And thirty six. Um. Okay. Um. Any other comments on J one? Are we ready? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um. I wanted to make a comment. Sure. General comment. Um. 
this one hundred and twenty thousand dollars that will be split between the water and sewer and capital improvement fund. Is this does this mean that the residents in the water and sewer district are essentially paying for this? Hundred percent. Correct. Yep. And so currently we do have the fund balance that has already accumulated to what it is. Um, and then yes, over the course of the next six years, based off the capital improvement plan and the rate study that we're doing, the funds would be reaccumulated um, and then reallocated um, in the future towards newer vehicles that we need to update at that point in time. But these trucks won't be used exclusively for homes in the water and sewer district. Right? These will. They will, they will be. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. With these will only be used for water and sewer work. Okay. Thank you. So would somebody like to make the model motion? Rizzo or supported by Noel. The motion is to approve purchase and equipping with lights and toolbox of a new 2024 GMC 2500 and a new 2024 GMC 1500 for the utility department, not to exceed 120,000 to waive bidding requirements due to the use of favored nations pricing. I'm not making that word up. I am not making up. That's right. not I'm making that up. I swear to you. Do we do, do we need <laughs> And lights and a toolbox, or has it already in there? Just equipment. I just said it. Yeah, oh, but okay, 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 equipping yeah. with lights and toolbox. Yeah, thank you. And then just say also known as my deal. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You know what? We're gonna. I'm not. I'm gonna go with both your suggestions. You you your eyeball on that one. Okay. Um, I'm calling the roll. Noel. Yes. Riser. Yes. Hathaway. Absent. Palmer. Yes. Lintoft. Yes. Brazo. Yep. Motion adopted, 5-0. J2, you're up, Brandon. Um, so when I first got hired, I might say that a few more times, uh, there was, it was known to me that previously an electric mower was brought to the board as well as probably a gas mower for you guys' decision on taking mowing over in the future. Um, it was tabled. Um, and then since we were working on the capital improvement, uh, it was brought up to me again to see if we would like to handle this internally. Um, I went and looked at the prices based on electric and gas mowing. Um, based on the little amount of mowing that we will be doing compared to a big business um, and the cost of electric mower and the fact that um, I don't think an eight hour battery um, is gonna actually get us to what we need to do, especially seeing as how we won't be able to charge it during the nighttime, because that would be ill-advised. Uh, I can't justify making a recommendation of buying an electric mower. I think the cost um, for that electric mower would, uh, is gonna outweigh um, the actual carbon footprint that we'd be making. I know we have a sustainability goal, but I, I just don't think it's a good recommendation for me to make based off of the use that we'll be using it for. Um, however, if the board, um, after hearing this, wants to pursue that, that is totally fine. I don't have a problem getting those quotes rounded back up and reproposing this. Um, but however, what I got proposed today is I went to Bullion and to Weingarts, and I chose to pick out um, two commercial grade low tier which is the entry level commercial mower. And I also picked a high grade uh, residential mower and got prices for those. And after looking at the prices and what we need and, and talking with Chief, um, Anna, the prior parks director, Chris, um, and myself, we concluded that the Skag mower was probably the ideal selection for us. It was in the middle price ground. Um, compared to the other mowers. Uh, it does come with a three-year warranty. Source well bidding is a national bid. Um, a national bid process that is is used currently right now. So not only did I get three quotes, but we also got the source well bidding for this specific unit, which brought it down $2,680 from the original price, which would bring the total to 9814 
Um, including in this was also an offer for a trade-in on our current mower, which is a 2007 Hustler Raptor Zero Turn. Um, currently, it, it does not turn on. Um, it definitely needs a lot of maintenance and, and TLC. Um, I don't think it's what we need going forward. So therefore, I do think the $1,000 for this instance is a good fair trade-in value for it. That would bring our total down for the mower to $8,814. And then part of the breakdown in cost is the addition of a $3,000 utility trailer. Um, I did get three quotes for like material and design of a utility trailer that was six by 10 so that our mower would securely set up on there and get secured with additional weed whips and gas cans and all that. Um, and based off of the designs and what we need, I selected the b &M utility trailer um, for $3,000. And as you can see, we uh, already did the fiscal impact and broke down how this would be split amongst the different people that would be using it. 40% for utility, 40% for park, 10% for fire, and 10% for building maintenance here at Silo Township. Um, and that includes the zero turn in the trailer and that that breakdown. And I would move to approve the purchase of the SCAG zero turn mower and BMM X BMM six foot by 10 foot utility trailer, splitting the uh, cost between utilities, parks, fire and building maintenance at a 40%, 40%, 10% and 10%. Uh, respectively, as outlined in agenda item J2. Second. Motion by Riser, second by Brazo. Discussion? I just have proposed a friendly amendment to just add to the motion with sword bow bidding in an amount not to exceed $12,000. Oh, friendly. Accepted. Friendly. Accepted. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Ready to vote? <clears throat> Okay, uh, call the roll. Noel? Yes. Reiser? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Linta? Yes. Brazo? Yes. Motion adopted 5 0. Next up is J3 Kennedy Industry Pump Maintenance. Brandon. Um, was speaking to Rich when I got here. Um, as I do mention in here, I only got the one bid price for Kennedy Solutions. They are the premier contractor for pump maintenance work throughout. Michigan, uh, back where I worked previous from here, we used Kennedy, even the same guys that showed up to help us at Walnut Ridge. Check valve replacement were the same guys I worked with. Um, and because of the work quality that they do, they get predominantly chosen to have uh, maintenance done by them. And that's the only one I can comfortably recommend to the board. Um, with saying that, pump maintenance at our Pump stations, our booster station uh, stations is is definitely critical to the operation of our system. Without preventative maintenance being done, these these pumps may fail at any time or wear out untimely due to them not being properly maintenanced. Um, so therefore, a maintenance contract, since how we can't do this work in house, is critical. Um, this was something that wasn't done for the past three years, but is standard. Um, and for that reason, I'm asking the board to approve uh, Kennedy Solutions to begin a one-year contract going forward for pump maintenance. Why are you recommending one year and not longer? Uh, that's just uh, when I asked for a contract, that's what I specified. Um, I guess I could have asked for a longer one. Um, I, I don't have a good reason why I just chose one year. Um, I guess I was. I just, I just didn't know if they yeah, did. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, you, sure you, you, you do make a good point. For both, yeah, you do. Well, once at least we get a one year with an option to renew at the same price or something, if we agree or if you can lock them into a three year at the same price, that way you don't have a price increase. I understand. So the, so the exchange for giving us a three year contract is you agree not to raise the price. That's the swap. I don't know if they do that. I don't know. I can certainly ask. That's a good idea. No, I agree. Um, if you're telling us it's critical and you got to have it. I mean, and if not, you know, if, you know, we could take a look at it and see if it works out. I don't know at this point. 
Okay, I don't. Yeah. I don't know how Kennedy works at all. Of yeah. I'm okay with. And I I think that's a good point too. Um, I was working on so many different themes of the cat. I'm not trying to make excuses, but this is kind of what I went with. Um, but certainly, I have no problem. We could table this for now. I do have other agenda items for the next board meeting. Um, I don't want to hold it up. I'm just saying, if if we need to do a little more research and could potentially get a better price. Well, we could look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, potentially lock them in for a three-year term that could make make it a little bit better That's deal for us. Me up on a uh, it hasn't been done in three years, but if if I get to bring that, like I said, I do have other agenda items for the next meeting. So I don't think another two weeks is going to matter um, a whole lot. Somebody like to offer a motion to table? I move to postpone until our um, April 23rd meeting. There's a second question. What's the oh, second? There's a difference second between final. tabling and postponing. Make sure we get the right. I think table is seen a diem without a certain date, then you remove it from the table. Okay. Postponing is to a date certain. Okay. That's my understanding. If okay, I, need that, to... okay. I couldn't remember. I know there's a difference. Okay. So, a motion by riser support by Noel to postpone J3 until regular meeting of April 23rd. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion adopted. J4, purchase of Metreon meters. Brandon. Um, previously, we discussed um, moving to doing a meter replacement program. Um, currently, we have 200 Metron meters in the system right now. Um, part of the program lets me see how these meters are working in the field in real time. These give minute by minute updates. Currently, right now, uh, as I said, we have 204 meters, all of them are reporting back. Um, and so I know it's spread out pretty good throughout the township. So I know that we got pretty good coverage with the Verizon wireless towers. Um, based off of the that data, I could I could fairly say that, oh, we should have very little issues at all with having um, connection with Verizon. Um, and these are all just antennas that are based inside the houses or buildings currently. They do make um, extended radio receivers that we can put on the outside of buildings if need be. Um, I don't really anticipate us needing to do that, but um, if some reason that we can't pick up it from the inside, we can still put an antenna on the outside. So I do feel confident with the ability for us to read these going forward. Um, again, this was a transition that was made by prior utility director. I do support his movement, seeing how we had a lot of utility building issues due to the failing census MXUs on the outside of buildings. These MXUs were not available uh, during COVID and still are very hard to come by due to um, how they're made and the certain parts that they need. Um, so it was definitely vital for us to move to a different type of meter. Uh, moving to being able to get a smart meter and have a website that not only allows many advantages for me and my utilities department, but also helps the public out um, as they're allowed to uh, look at their own individual meters and they can see how much bother they're using on a daily basis. They can set alerts to their cell phones or emails and alert them if they have a leak or there's a lot, a lot of different capabilities with this meter. Um, I did use these in the city of Flint when I worked there. Um, they're easy to install, easy to maintain. Um, we didn't have too many issues with them. Um, all meters, I wanna warn you guys, all meters claim to be the best meters. Uh, there's no bulletproof answer. Um, the best way to do it is a call who actually has them in the system and try to do your due diligence the best that you can. Um, and I called the city of Flint, Again, just to verify that they're still happy with the meters. I called the city of Detroit. Uh, I didn't get an answer, but we did go to a meeting in Lansing and the actual meter specialist that runs the, that division, it's a whole different division. Um, she spoke highly of the Metron meters and I called, the name escapes me, but I called one more source that had a decent amount of Metron meters. And again, they were happy. On the east side, if I remember from my presentation. Yes. Or something over there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with that being said, I, I do have faith that we're going to get a good return on our investment with these meters. 
Um, I like the, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay, quick question. Um, how long do you think, um, we got a five year period, how long do you project 400,000? Well, last, how much is kind of the total meter replacement project? Yeah, the total meter replacement project is for the current meters that we have on, current accounts we have on hand is $1.7 million. We're just replacing the meters that we have in the system right now. The $400,000 is comprised of $300,000 worth of replacing meters in our system um, and taking out the old census meters. There's another $100,000 that I put in there because we have a lot of new bills coming in here that are gonna take up a lot of meters as well. So I put in a little bit of a buffer zone, um, depending on how many we get that, you know, adequately replace on our own and how many are needed for the new constructions. Um, I believe I can manage this within 400,000. Um, however, if we are really proactive and we do really good on our end as far as getting in, in the houses and, and people are responding to us, um, there may be, um, it may be a point in time where I come to Joyce and, and get her support to ask for additional funds, but the additional funds would only, I mean, again, it, it's part of the whole capital fund that we approve. So it would, it would never exceed that amount. It'll just be interesting to see what kind of pace you can have. Yeah, it's, well. it's gonna, it's gonna be really interesting. Um, I did get, get one quote for all the residential buildings to be uh, contracted out and installed by a contractor. That was $450,000. Um, and so that was a, quite a bit of money um, in order to get those put in. And so I thought- Didn't we already approved the overtime in your budget for correct. your team to do it yourself? Correct, yeah, we did allocate some some money in our account. I was just making a note that I did see what that, that amount would be. And I think we could come under that amount Great. Any other questions from the board? Or are we ready to? I'm ready, but I want to ask you if we need to, if the amount of motion suffices with respect to particularity on where the money is coming from. Yeah, yeah. could I suggest? Or, uh, I, I move the model motion to approve PO for the purchase of Metron meters not to exceed $400,000 without BOT approval, subject to the friendly amendments that are forthcoming. Is there a second? Support. Okay, support by Palmer. Friendly amendments. Um, to be uh, strike without BOT approval and to say to be split evenly between the water and sewer funds, period. It will be without BOT approval because we're approving it tonight. So be, these are water meters that comes out of sewer? Or water, water and sewer. It's split, it's split okay. evenly okay. between sure. water and sewer funds. With you. Thank you. And I and I just did the sewer fund because we do calculate our sewer usage uh, for customers based off these meters. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. I'll call the roll. Noel. Yes. Riser. Yes. Palmer. Yes. Lintoft. Yes. Brazo. Yes. Motion adopted. Five zero. Next up is J six Utilities Department GIS support GIS data migration and water meter replacement program. I if I may, I think we let uh, Miss J5. Oh, I'm sorry, Brandon. J5, New Jackson Road pump station generator. Um, when I first got here, one of the first priorities was trying to figure out what we needed to do with the generator at the pump station. Currently, the generator is as old as, I mean, it's the original generator that is at that station. Uh, at some point in time, some things were changed at the pump station which has now made this generator not fully capable of running all the pumps at the station as it is. Um, and so OHM myself um, was tasked with trying to figure out the best solution for a generator size right now, and also trying to figure out when the expansion of the sewer station happens or the increasing of the wet well, um, how is buying a generator not right now going to accommodate when we do that expansion? So through talking to Cummings and Huron Valley in a meeting, um, we discussed the option of this 300 kilowatt generator. This generator would replace the old one, of course. There is enough room that if and when the expansion to the pump station happens, 
this generator will be able to parallel to the next generator that we'll need to accommodate whatever the increased kilowatts an hour that we would need. So if the expansion happened and it was found, we found that we needed 450 kilowatts, we'd buy another 150 kilowatt generator and parallel it to the 300, now we have 450. So this was the best solution to accommodate the size that we need now and to also be able to connect to a different generator in the future when we needed to. Um, this uh, in front of you today is to approve just the cost of the generator at 98,274. This money would not be spent this year. This is just to allocate the money in the PO so that um, they know we got the money reserved for it. I will be able to get it on order. Um, it is taking about a year to get this generator in. The hopes is that we would be able to put this in in the springtime of 2025. That sounds great. I would just um, suggest to the model motion that we would include as bid through source well contract and subject to township attorney approval because this is a contract requiring kind of building um, something that's a year out. I'd like um, township attorney approval. Um, are there other comments or questions? If that's a motion, I would second it. If not, in the motion, I would move the model motion with your uh, appended uh, phrase. Okay, moved by Riser. Is there support? Support. Support by Bergeau. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, Noel? Yes. Riser? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Lintoff? Yes. Brazil? Yes. Motion adopted 5 0. And now up is J6 Utility Department GIS support. You said that's the original generator in there. Oh, are we pushing? Are we pushing? Um, GIS. So uh, there has been a lot of talk about GIS across all um, of the departments, I believe. Um, currently, we do not have. As far as utilities goes, we don't have any of our own data. Um, in our own cloud system. So part of this approval would to be able to transfer the GIS information that OHM currently has on their own cloud server to our own cloud server. And um, additionally, this also will approve us to create one of the first apps for utilities department. This app would be to basically have an overview of Silo Township's community. Um, and some way, somehow, we have to get down to the nitty gritty. Um, at every single house, I'll be able to change the color of the house. Um, and that way, I'll be able to track what houses have not had meter replacements and what house has meter replacements. I've seen um, a preview of how this works through the city of Ann Arbor. Um, they are also doing a meter replacement program. And on top of that, they also incorporated it with their service line change out, which is much more extensive than what we'll be doing here. but. I seen the way that it works through Ann Arbor, and it is definitely something that will be beneficial as us to have a heads up display um, so we can knock door to door or know exactly what house is a call on a map system instead of searching through paperwork and trying to figure it out. Um, Could I ask yeah. you to stop right there just in the interest of time, see if there's other uh, questions or yeah, comments? So this is, a, this is GIS layers that's gonna help you plot out and better manage your work right. where it needs to be done. Correct. And I'd say too, I'm noticing Chris has um, recommended this and yes. this is part of Chris's larger plan. So I have confidence in it. I also want to note very importantly for the first time ever, Sion Township will actually be in custody of our critical infrastructure right. related to utilities instead of having it. So we're going to end up owning, owning the data. We're getting it. We already do. It's our data. But we'll have it in our possession. So then I would move to approve the proposal by OHM to rebuild and further develop uh, ARC GIS online system and overall GIS infrastructure. Funds to come from 50% capital outlay sewer systems, GL 590-000-973.000, and 50% capital outlay water system, GL 591-000-972.000. Motion by Riser, is there a second? Sorry. Second by Brajot, discussion. I would just note, I'm not sure that it should come from 590 and 591. I don't know what 
discussion has been on here, but I think this is kind of a broader um, IP expense that should be cost allocated through um, the I'm IT department. Open to a friendly, or I'm open to an allocation instead of 50%. I mean, I don't know. So my, my, well, my your thoughts are Chris, uh, Chris put this together. Oh, he did? Yeah. He, okay. You know, he prepared the item. So I'm okay. thinking that he gave that consideration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll let it be. Yeah, yeah. I would I would second that set of it. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, but there's is, certainly things going forward that will be paid for by different departments based on their needs. Yeah. I do want to say, though, that I'd like to at least correct the account numbers if we keep the funds because it can't come out of capital outlay. It's it's so, going to be a so contract. Do I need to say the fund number is subject to approval by our... No, if we can just correct it right here. Uh, we could just change it to... I mean, we, we can honestly just say from sewer... Are the numbers? 590-00823 and 591-000823. I just know it'll cause questions for Rebecca. We okay. put it into capital. Okay. Okay. That's friendly. All questions? Yep. Uh, Noel? Yes. Riser? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Lintoff? Yes. Rizzo? Yes. Uh, motion adopted by vote. I just want to really appreciate you guys supporting um, and making the decision you guys did today. Uh, it's really going to help out. So I appreciate it. Great. Thanks for all your work, Brandon. Great. Okay. Uh, next See up is sale of township property at 7970 West Liberty. There was handed out an additional um, resolution at our tables today. And um, thank you um, for being here. Of course. Um, I don't know where we want to start, Joyce. Well, basically, uh, the uh, board authorized uh, the manager and the uh, supervisor to work with uh, Patrick and Pauly related to the sale of the property uh, on uh, Liberty Road, 7970 West Liberty Road. Uh, Patrick has indicated we received two bids uh, related to the purchase of the property. And um, I think I'll turn it over to him, have him talk about um, what is being recommended and the rationale. Okay, great. Patrick. Yeah, so um, I guess maybe I'll just start with a little quick summary of, you know, kind of the activity. I mean, uh, we had, I, I think I took more calls on this property than I've ever taken on any property I've ever listed. And this was probably, I think I sold five other houses since this was listed and this definitely was double the calls I've taken on any of those properties. So it was pretty wild. Um, agents, uh, lots of people from the public calling on the sign. Um, uh, Will Hathaway sent some various people my way. Um, we had 29 showings total. Uh, there were another 25 groups that came through the open house, which is pretty, pretty solid showing 29 showings in that basically let just under three week period between, um, I think it was, uh, the 15th is when it went live open house was Sunday. And then, uh, we basically called for offers to be due by, uh, April 1st, just because, uh, we had to get everything ready for the meeting here. Um, so yeah, we generated, uh, Two offers on the property. Um, I think the one we're recommending uh, is clearly the superior one just on price. And it also, I had quite a few conversations with the, uh, so the the buyer was initially going to just try to make an offer financed, but his agent who he's also been a business partner with in the past on other properties has decided to help him finance it. So they're doing a cash sale. Um, she's also one of the purchasers and that's, uh, the contract you guys have before you. So the, my understanding is the only contingency is a here, I see some kind of inspection, but that's the only contingency. Uh, I right? know. So there's a an inspection contingency, uh, which is on page, uh, let's see here. So there's the review of the well and septic. Uh, there's an attorney review, of. Uh, well, I guess the, the contract, they have 10 days uh, attorney review of the contract and 10 days attorney review of the title commitment. Uh, the bottom of page three, they have five business days for the inspection. 
and they were hoping to do that, I think, on Friday. So assuming this gets approved today. Yeah, so the only other question, I mean, is is there any reason why it's uh, redacted that the uh, buyer information is redacted? Is there any? That, I mean, I, that was my call. That was your call? Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, it's a full price offer, right? It's a full price offer, yeah. It's okay. cash, well, cash and full price. I would call this person full buyer offer. I mean, we call them that. I like that. Yeah. So, well, and the, the one What's buyer the two, like? the one buyer two is a is a contractor, and I know the uh, the agent who's also the buyer. She's I back when I was a contractor, we actually worked on one of her houses. She owned a big Victorian house in Ann Arbor that she had restored. So they've got sounds like they've got a lot of experience dealing with these types of properties. So it seems like a win-win for everybody here. So I have a question, and if you can't answer it, or if it's not prudent to answer, I can appreciate that. But was the winning bid significantly more than the second place? Yes, bid? The significantly more. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Seventy-five thousand more. And I I appreciate the not wanting to kind of share uh purchaser's name i think we want to you know there's a policy interest to not you know discriminate or anything you know knowing who it is but i just want to verify our township attorney we, we looked at this so that it's legitimate buyer real yeah. person yeah okay no yeah. concern yeah i, I don't we have terms of funds yeah. we had you know all the things we would normally look oh, i was just going to add to i believe um the supervisor also sent uh, a letter that was provided from the potential buyer, the buyer. yeah, about oh, their plans for the their parcel. plans for the property. Okay. And and we do have the um, we do have the well and septic approval, mm -hmm. so that's nice. I'm yeah, and I I sent that over to yeah. the uh, the agent this afternoon. Great, great. Okay. Are there any other questions? Further discussion? Is somebody prepared to offer the resolution? I am to authorize the township manager to accept the attached offer on behalf of Sile Township and work with the township attorney and realtor to close the sale of the township owned historic farm at 7970 West Liberty. Um, John, if you'd, be, terms attached. if you'd be so kind to offer the resolution that was handed out tonight. Okay. Um, do I read the whole thing or do I just move the model resolution? E either way, you can just reference the resolution okay. to okay. authorize the sale. To authorize to accept the uh, sale as, as set forth in the uh, attached resolution. Does that work? Sure. Is there support? Support. Okay, offered by Riser, support by Brazo. Thank you, Jessica. Sure, I just want to make sure we're authorizing the right language. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the roll. Noel? Yes. Riser? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Flintoff? Yes. Brazo? Yes. <laughs> uh, resolution adopted, 5-0. Thank you for all your work. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And uh, Joyce, um, make sure when you go, when you do sign the offer, uh, line 40 and 41 need to be both executed. Um, my brokerage requires that both. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody for your work. Next up, we have um, public comment. This is the time for members of the public to speak for up to three minutes. Well, I see no, no members of the public. Here, so I think we're good. Um, I'd like to turn to any uh, attendees on Zoom. Please raise your Zoom hand if you're interested in speaking. So 12 people on the time. Uh, first up, we have Rob Pattinson, followed by Pam Boyd. Rob. First of all, I hope everything is okay with Supervisor Hathaway's house. Let's hope that it's just a little thing and, and nothing big. Um, tonight uh, at, at the uh, six o'clock meeting, I want to call, you're gonna wanna write this down. I wanna call your attention to section 4.2, paragraph three. Section 4.2, paragraph three. Uh, I believe that proves that Jillian is innocent. It, it talks about how that, um, Outlook account was open on that computer and there was no sign in. Um, so in my opinion, that's sort of the, um, the nail in the coffin of this fiasco. Um, and Ian Hubert uh, is a very tech savvy key witness in this whole fiasco. Uh, why was he never interviewed? I believe that was an opportunity miss. 
And then along those lines, um, uh, I hope you all noticed how effective Ian was in five minutes of his public comment. Imagine if he had been sitting at the table and able to answer your questions. That's how a supervisor interested in the truth would have set up the meeting. Instead, we got a meeting and investigation designed to fail. And on top of that, we had the township attorney implying the threat of calling the police on the very person directly damaged by this false accusation. This fiasco has been manipulated at every step. Um, you all need to open your eyes to that manipulation. Um, uh, Trustee Riser and Trustee Brizzo, um, I hope that this event has, uh, has opened your eyes. I know that Trustee Noel and Clerk Flintoft have the best interest of residents at heart, and I know that they pay attention. Um, I hope that this has, like I said, opened your eyes. Um, uh, for the, um, the, uh, uh, for the Gelman, uh, thing, um, thank you, Supervisor Hathaway for putting it on next door. And then Roger Rail provided the link directly to, uh, the EPA comment page. I would suggest putting that link in the banner of the SIO website so that um, it, that alerts people that there's only like 25 days left um, and we'll give them direct access to that link. That might be a way of helping to get more responses. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you, Rob. Next up is Pam Boyd. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Pam. There we go. Story. All right. <laughs> No problem. Um, I, I too uh, echo uh, Rob's comment that I hope that uh, supervisors ha uh, Supervisor Hathaway's house um, um, is not damaged, that um, everything is okay. Um, Trustees Brizot and Trustee Riser, I call upon you to hold Supervisor Hathaway um, in line when he is disrespectful to the women of this board. This has been going on since day one of uh, about day one of the supervisor's tenure here. And I'm sick and tired of it. And I expect both of you to hold him to be respectful to the women on this board. And I will call you guys out on it in the future if you don't. Thank you, have a good evening. Thank you, Pam. Next up is Paula Globerson. Paula, you're on. Yeah, Paula yeah. Globerson. Um, I liked uh, John Reiser's uh, apiary thing. And since he's on the planning commission, I uh, they're going to be having their sustainability uh, fair and they'll have native plants because I know people they may not want to be involved with the township but that do apiary and beehives and um, there's that is a fabulous idea I think that's great and um, I want to say how we deal with incidents at the hospital we have a thing called critical incidents and when we have a critical incident, everybody who has been involved in whatever the incident is, it's usually a patient related uh, care thing. We have all of the parties get together and it, and it could also be a criminal thing, uh, uh, ne criminal negligence, et cetera. And we get together and have a uh, head on head and everybody gets to put their two cents in before calling in uh, different parties that may deal with the particular critical incident. And I think so much would have been avoided if that would have been done. And that that is a much better way of dealing with it. And then um, on the SIO Community News, there was a uh, policy handbook. I think that's a great idea that we should have a policy handbook spelling out 
how different things should be dealt with. And then thirdly, I wanted to thank uh, uh, the utilities director. Uh, I'm all for sustainability, but sometimes uh, electric this or that it does not make sense. I'm a capitalist and uh, want to have good use. And um, I hope we can figure out a way to do the bus. I will not be taking the bus. I don't know if anybody's aware that there was a stabbing over on Fuller on the AATA. And I'm not sure we're gonna get the ridership back. However, sometimes that's the only uh, av available uh, transportation to, to people. And I think it's kind of uh, something even though uh, it could be expensive and could tailor it. And I'm glad you kind of waited to say, oh, we're gonna do, uh, investigate it uh, a little bit more. Uh, I think the taxpayers, when I read different things, they're looking for people, not just SIO, but Ann Arbor, Washington, all over the state. They're looking at getting a lot of bang for our buck. And uh, there is a limit uh, I just watched the business channel again today. I watch it every day in Bloomberg. I do not think we're, we're, we may see CPIs and they're not even putting energy into CPI numbers. Uh, they're talking oh, 8%. Thank you, Paula. Paula, yeah, all right, have a great night. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, thanks a lot, Paula. Appreciate it. Next up is Bob Walsh. Bob, you're on. Good evening. I'll be short. I just want to thank Trustee Riser as well for pulling together the pollinator project proposal. Um, as a beekeeper, I endorse it. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Bob. Um, I see no other interested public. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Support. Moved by Verdo. Support by Riser. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. The meeting is adjourned. 1018. Whoever opposed it. I mean, I'm just curious. I have. <laughs> really? <laughs> what? I had a very compelling reason. What's, a, what's the best that drop?